Every track on the stock car circuit has its own optimal strategy. But only at Martinsville is the best plan a paradox. See, on the paperclip's famous turns, drivers must go in gently like a lamb or else. Trouble in turn three. Stuck the enemy outside wall. Oh, almost. Then unleash the lion within as they pounce into the straightaway powerfully, aggressively, even fearlessly. Chastain did a video game move. I don't know. I don't know. I the corner. I could not believe it. That was ridiculous. For on these exits, it's Hunter B. Hunter. They touch once, twice, drag race. Jim Johnson. By a finger. Gentlemen, Jim. A mentality that seemingly contradicts that of the land but instead complements it perfectly at this half mile of mayhem. We welcome you live to Southern Virginia, NASCAR's oldest track, Martinsville Speedway. Today, a comeback race for some, a payback race for others, an entertaining short track race for all. You're watching Race Day presented by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar and the weather, it's nice. Cool, comfortable, cozy. Chance of a rain shower a little later, but 70 degrees and the drivers are ready to roll. Moved up the start time. There's your pole sitter signing some autographs, and we are on the track above right at turn four to welcome you to the track, to the action, so you'll feel closer to the race. Clint Boyer, a Hall of Famer, Bobby Labonte. I'm Chris Myers. Nice to see you, Bobby, out of the studio, joining us here to call the race. Glad to be here, yeah. All right, and uh, we have this race marks the quarter mark of the season. I know you're excited about this stretch of short track racing. Oh, it's been such, you know, good racing on these short tracks, but this racetrack in particular, I love this racetrack. I love everything about about it from the time you get in the gate. Literally in the backyard of small town America. Um, houses all the way around this place. Bobby, such a cool yeah. racetrack. Neat setting. Yeah, it really is. And obviously we've had two different winners on short tracks. And uh, so going forward, I look forward to, to Martinsville because, you know, we all saw what's happened at the last two. You know, not not always easy for everybody. So I look for this track to be tough for them. And, you know, you know how Martinsville is. You have to get into somebody every now and then. So we'll see how that goes for 400 laps. And you have both won here as drivers. Uh, they know what time it is when it comes to a grab but a grandfather clock, the trophy going to the winner. A check of the top storylines. Fan favorite Chase Elliott, 2020 Cup Series champion, is back after missing six races, fracturing his tibia in a snowboarding accident. We'll talk with him. Clint Boyer sat down with Chase. And after winning last week in Bristol, Christopher Bell trying to go back to back on the short track. He won here last fall, starts 22nd today. And Ryan Brees, the fastest yeah. qualifying speed. He'll start from the pole alongside Daniel Suarez up front. It's already been interesting here because we've had four different race teams win in the last four races. And now you have the Stuart Haas drivers. All four of them are in the first seven starting positions. This could be their day. Who are you keeping an eye on? Those. You just said it. Stuart Haas Racing. Hats off to them. Um, showed up a four fast, you know, Ford Mustangs. These guys are really fast, obviously, for one lap. Now we got to see if they can hold on for the you know, the race runs. Yeah, and I look at Martin Churex and, and uh, uh, Denny Hamlin. I mean, I think if those two guys have won eight races here. Yes, And it's won. like, where were they at? So they really got to get a turnaround, and I think this is a place they can do that. Uh, they have proved that, but they got to go out there and show it today. Yep, we've said they've been running since the 40s here. NASCAR's oldest track, Red Byron won the first one. Uh, William Byron won last year. He's the only two-time winner this year. We're just getting started live in Virginia. Here's what's coming up as we continue. The clock is ticking as race day is counting down the minutes to the green flag. It was a miracle at Martinsville last fall. We'll look back at the legendary lap from Ross Chastain that defied time. And it was almost 40 years ago when time was running out for Rick Hendrick in NASCAR. But Jeff Bodine collected a clock and the rest is history for HMS. Time heals everything. Or in Chase Elliott's case, his fractured leg. Our Clint Boyer welcomes back NASCAR's most popular driver ahead of his anticipated return all that plus Michael Waltrip goes a little cuckoo on the grid as we get ready for short track racing at Martinsville right here on FS1 
sell, they'll sell more than 10,000 of those famous hot dogs this weekend. And, and that was uh, semi track executive Devin Valaki of Fox consuming maybe about half those, uh, but they're only $2, which, uh, which makes it worth it. Uh, we welcome you back uh, to race day. We're live on the scene from Martinsville, brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. And we're joined by the pole sitter, Ryan Priest. Stuart Haas Racing, an impressive weekend already. Ryan, we saw you gathering with the fans, chatting with Bobby Labonte. Thanks for coming by. Congrats on the poll. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, certainly a confidence booster and, and a good start for our day. Absolutely. Now, Ryan, I hate to do it. There's nothing that drove me more nuts as a race car driver when somebody brings up the past. But, Bristol, take me back there to Bristol. You're obviously frustrated. When, what day this week did it finally wear off? You said, all right, I'm going to Martinsville. I'm going to sit on the pole and take care of business. Monday at about... 12 1201 <laughs> I'm uh, I've raced long enough and, and done a lot of racing that if you keep focusing on the previous one you're not going to be able to put your best foot forward for the next one so I was uh, as soon as Monday hit I was preparing for today and obviously our team we did a really good job and we have a fast race car all right I'm not going to bring up the past like him I'm going to I'm going to bring up a little bit of the past you won a race here in, in uh, 2008 a modified race so coming forward looking into this year I know you're excited about this race team and the chances you've had I know it's been a little bit of a struggle haven't quite finished had the finishes but did you have Martinsville picked as like hey I'm going to go to a track that I feel like I can have the best shot at today's the day yeah I think just just that short track background right uh, Martinsville is definitely one that I as a driver feel really comfortable when I come here so just you know, as a driver, sometimes when you don't have the speed right off the truck or you're not fast right away, you just you really beat on yourself. So uh, to be able to get that pole, that was that was a confidence booster and one I really needed right now. So uh, we're going to move forward today. we got 400 long laps. I'm going to take Clint's advice, yeah. patience. You know, we'll we'll hopefully have a really good day today. Well, take good, advantage of that pit, pit yeah. stop, too. That pit box is number one stall, yeah, best out a, there. He's, he's the least patient guy as a broadcaster, <laughs> but that's okay. Thanks for coming by. Thank All right, you. good luck good today. Luck, buddy. We're going to stay with another Ford ride. driver. Welcome in uh, Joey Logano. Hi, Joey. Thanks for stopping by. I, I know you had some un unfortunate news here about uh, going to have to move to the to the rear of the field because of a, what is it, a water tank leak or something? Yeah, the overflow tank had a crack in it, and uh, apparently she was dripping water. We need water out there, so <laughs> going to need gotta that. that. Going to need that at some point. So we figured we'd. Uh, I guess we're lucky we found it before the race. It's kind of a bittersweet thing, though, to say. Yeah, and officially there are 36 drivers, and that's the the best ever. Somebody has won this race from 36. So you actually yeah. have a chance to. We can that. do it. Yes. All right, we can, can do it. it. We got our work cut out for us for sure. We thought our Verizon Mustang was was decent. Um, definitely needed to make some changes. We changed a lot overnight, and we'll have our work cut out. I'm sure it's not going to be a smooth ride to the front. <laughs> well, going obviously going to the back. Where where is the focus there? I mean, you can go a lap down quick, and not yeah. really your doings and the speed in your car. They just catch you that much faster. That's a tough part here in Martinsville, right? If you start all the way back there, you're you're a half track behind in the first 10 laps of the yeah. run. Uh, so you got to go hard, and then that means you can't manage your race the way you want to. You can't save your tires the way you want to. You can't save your car and keep everything in one piece. You got to like go hard like it's the last 20 laps of the race right off the bat because I'm not sure how much uh, chances we'll have to recover, right? If, if you don't get a good start and you go down a lap, I don't know how many opportunities you'll have to get the lucky dog and keep going. So we got to go hard from the get go. Yep. Are you are you worried at all about on this start getting into somebody, somebody getting into you, just trying to be on the defense? I mean, or do you just go after it and I just not worry go. about? It? Sure, like, I'm go, on defense, <laughs> no chance. So, well, no, no. I'm thinking last weekend you're up on the cushion. The only yeah. cushion here's the wall, so don't yeah, go that high. I don't want to do that. I want to stay on the concrete <laughs> side of it for sure. Well, I think the track will get now. wide okay. at some point. You know, I think I think there'll be two and a half, almost three that's lanes great, of yeah. racing through right. the corner that's good. Um, eventually, yeah, but right. it's not going to be like that to start. And so that's where it's kind of tough. Like, you can go hard, but you're going to pay the price if the, if the first run goes long. You think so it's weather helps early that? caution. Does the weather help you? Um, probably not. Yeah. Probably not yeah. in this well, case, on. but I don't know. Right. Maybe it rains. That'll help, too. I don't know. <laughs> that might help. Enjoy your, uh, your pre-race coke. Yeah, by the way, seven top ten finishes in the last ten, so you're, you're, you're on a there roll here. All, All right. right. We'll make it happen. Good luck from yeah, the thanks, back. Guys. We'll continue hey, live from Martinsville. You're watching race day on FS1, counting it out of the race. It moved up the start time just a bit. Chase is returning, and Clint Boyer, he sat down with him to talk about it.
Drivers have blamed Ross Chastain for almost everything the past few weeks. The wrecking ball came in and made us three wide at the last second, and there wasn't enough room to be three wide. But did you know he overturned the points penalty for Hendrick Motorsports? Ross. And told Josh Williams where to park his car. Ross. Plus, he's single-handedly inflating watermelon prices. Worst of all, he created the Hail Melon, then got it outlawed. We're, we're not telling a lie here, are we, Larry Mack? No, absolutely <laughs> not. Stop you toe in the middle of that. Where's Ross at? Yes, we do want to thank Ross, however, for taking us for quite a ride along Martinsville. It was a hail melon when we were there in October. Fans loved it, and it made Ross a NASCAR sensation. I saw out of the corner of my eye this red streak going around the outside. Yes. Oh, that's the one! Chastain did a video game move! It's just the reality and the video game move that just really surprises me about him being a pretty crazy driver. I thought I was just the coolest thing. Oh, Chastain is wall riding! Oh my god! Oh my god! What did he do? This is wild. That's one of the greatest moves I've ever seen. Really, from right here off at four, coming to take the white, it was the only thought that was in my mind. It was a bigger impact than I thought. I actually let go of the wheel right here in the middle. The G-forces were so strong, they pinned my hands over. Oh, ridiculous, the risk has to be worth the reward, I think, for a bid to go fight for a championship. It's just life goals. I went absolutely berserk. Really cool to go home with the rest of my family that doesn't get to travel with me and hear their stories of where they were at. My Uncle Richie left the room because he didn't want to watch the last lap and then he heard him screaming and he came running back in. It just doesn't look real. Holy cow. <laughs> Berserk. Cool to go home with the rest of my family that doesn't get to travel with me and hear their stories of where they were at. My Uncle Richie left the room because he didn't want to watch the last lap and then he heard him screaming and he came running back in. It just doesn't look real. Holy cow. Can we pass people doing that? Yeah, he got in the final four doing that. Jones, he didn't like it. He did not like it. And I love it. Nothing in the rule book says you can't, right? Never, ever, ever has there been a move like we just saw. I'm proud that I did it, that it worked, and selfishly glad that no one else gets to do it. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, happy about that. Yes, because it is in the NASCAR rulebook. Now you cannot do it. I swear, every time I see that, it almost looks like someone's hitting fast forward on just his car. <laughs> I mean, we've probably shown it a dozen times over the last few days. Happy about that. Yes, because it is in the NASCAR rulebook. Now you cannot do it. I swear, every time I see that, it almost looks like someone's hitting fast forward on just his car. <laughs> I mean, we've probably shown it a dozen times over the last few days right here from the studio, and it is still does not look real, but still blows my mind that he had the presence of mind to even try it, much less execute it and pull it off. That, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, and it's not just that he rode the wall a little quicker. He, he upshifted, yeah. grabbed another gear, and then didn't let off the gas when he got to the corner, rode the wall around that, and he talked about how rough that was. It's just something crazy that, that I didn't think that, yeah, that we were ever going to see, um, you know, in, in a race. Yeah. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, it takes commitment to be able to do that, right? Yeah. So, so total, total craziness and I want to talk to, to Bobby and, and Clint you guys that never crossed my mind in a car to do what we saw Ross do you guys think we'd ever see that before no, not no a million way. years, but seeing it, I was up on the back straightaway in my bus. I saw it firsthand, guys, beating off. Bobby and, and Clint, you guys, that never crossed my mind in a car to do what we saw Ross do. You guys think we'd ever see that before? No, not no a million way. years, but seeing it, I was up on the back straightaway in my bus. I saw it firsthand, guys, beating on the horn, beating on the glass. The neighbors are going crazy. The grandstands were wild. I will never forget that day. Literal game changer. Changed the rules yeah. forever. It took me about 10 minutes to go, what just happened again? Because I was so incredible. And, I mean, he took his hands off the steering wheel. I'm like, would you ever do that? No, there's no way. I mean, so to me, it's just like one of those things you had to watch it over and over and over. Like I said, it took me 10 minutes watching on TV going, 
did he really do that or is that some, something wrong? So that was crazy. Uh, I think Clint's description well, of how he reacted is probably just... Yeah. I will never forget that day. Literal game changer. Changed the rules yeah. forever. It took me about 10 minutes to go, what just happened again? Because <laughs> I was so incredible. And I mean, he took his hands off the steering wheel. I'm like... Would you ever do that? No, there's no way. I mean, so to me, it's just like one of those things you had to watch it over and over and over. Like I said, it took me 10 minutes watching it on TV going, did he really do that or is that some, something wrong? So that was crazy. I, I think Clint's description well, of how he reacted is probably just yeah. a regular Tuesday and, night at the well, Boyer's house, too. I've seen Myers drive Buddy, like that, but it's exactly typically on the way to the salon. To <laughs> so much fun. All right, we'll be back with you guys shortly, but coming up on the show, we know how special Martinsville is to Hendrick Motorsports, but you might not realize just how far back that connection goes. We are going to show you just that. You do not want to miss this. So much fun. All right, we'll be back with you guys shortly, but coming up on the show, we know how special Martinsville is to Hendrick Motorsports, but you might not realize just how far back that connection goes. We are going to show you just that. You do not want to miss this. Back here on race day, it was that guy right there, William Byron, who drove to victory lane one year ago at Martinsville. One of 27 wins that Hendrick Motorsports has at the Virginia track. And we all know that there are some tracks that just have a little bit more meaning to drivers and to teams. Back here on race day, it was that guy right there, William Byron, who drove to victory lane one year ago at Martinsville. One of 27 wins that Hendrick Motorsports has at the Virginia track. And we all know that there are some tracks that just have a little bit more meaning to drivers and to teams. No question for Hendrick, that place is Martinsville, because without Martinsville, there might not be an HMS. Here's a look back at the moment that defines the team and the racetrack. Unfortunately, the future is not so bright for all-star racing and owner Rick Hendrick. Jeff Bodine and their number five Chevrolet were unable to finish after place is Martinsville, because without Martinsville, there might not be an HMS. Here's a look back at the moment that defines the team and the racetrack. Unfortunately, the future is not so bright for all-star racing and owner Rick Hendrick. Jeff Bodine and their number five Chevrolet were unable to finish after two multi-car wrecks here at Darlington. Eric, it's Rick. We just need some time, Rick. No. It's over. We've given it enough time. Lord knows I've given it enough money. Let us race Martinsville. Jeff is great on that track. You and I both know we love this too much to walk away. We just need some time, Rick. No. It's over. We've given it enough time. Lord knows I've given it enough money. Let us race Martinsville. Jeff is great on that track. You and I both know we love this too much to walk away. I'll think about it. I'll tell you one thing. Even if I can't get that car out to Martinsville, I don't think I can stomach to watch. It is a constant pursuit to strengthen the bond of marriage. It's not always easy, which is why we... I'll tell you one thing. Even if I can't get that car out to Martinsville, I don't think I can stomach to watch. It is a constant pursuit to strengthen the bond of marriage. It's not always easy, which is why we always hear love is patient. This is it, our last chance. So you know, no pressure. What does it mean for us to be patient? The green flag is down and we're underway here in Martinsville. Joe Rutman's number 98 car leads the pack from the pole position. We must trust in three pillars of marriage. Faith. You're going to take the outside. But hold your line. Rutman's number 98 car leads the pack from the pole position. We must trust in three pillars of marriage. Faith. You're going to take the outside. But hold your line. Hope. Wait for it. And love. Now! The great.
greatest of these is love. And love. Now! The greatest of these is love. It's wonderful to have all three, but we all know sometimes we lose faith. And we've all felt hopeless. But boy, when you have love behind you, you are unstoppable. It's just beautiful words today. It's wonderful to have all three, but we all know sometimes we lose faith. And we've all felt hopeless. But boy, when you have love behind you, you are unstoppable. It's just beautiful words today. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. It's great to see you. Oh, Rick. Mr. Hendrick, you have a call. It's your mother. Mom, everything okay? Yes, yes, I'm fine. What is it? Is Jeff hurt? Oh, fine. It's just... Mom, it's okay as long as everybody's okay. Oh. And then I are heading home. We uh -oh. won! What? I said we won! Bodine never gave ground as he chalked up his very first Winston Cup victory four and a half seconds ahead of the pack. With a happy Jeff Bodine at Martinsville Speedway. We won. We because I was here for Race Hub this week with Chad Knauss, who of course has contributed to so many of the wins uh, at Hendrick Motorsports and specifically at this racetrack. And he was blown away. He was like, this is, is really cool to watch. And I know you were at that race, Larry. Yeah, I was. And you know, this new race team, they came in there and they started the season off with three consecutive top tens. But the rumor through the garage area, this was going to absolutely be it, that they were not going to race anymore. They win the race. And who would believe now, spin it ahead to 2023, Six wins away from 300 cup wins, 14 championships with five different drivers, and the numbers are still growing. I love those reenactments because I kind of knew that story, but when you when you see it laid out, it, it makes more sense and it, it kind of puts you in that place. Uh, but Hendrick Motors head to 2023, six wins away from 300 cup wins, 14 championships with five different drivers, and the numbers are still growing. I love those reenactments because I kind of knew that story, but when you when you see it laid out, it, it makes more sense and it, it kind of puts you in that place. Uh, but Hendrick Motorsports at this particular track has been incredible. The 27 wins uh, that you mentioned, 10,000 laps they've led at this place, and they've won three of the last five races with three different drivers in their, their current group of cars, so all those guys are good at this track. They will be a threat today. Dynasty is absolutely the key word when you think about Hendrick Motorsports at all started at Martinsville. Up next, one of the guys who's contributed to that dynasty, Chase Elliott, spoke to Clint Boyer about today's return to racing for the first time after fracturing that leg. How's he feeling? And hey, Michael Waltrip, he's going to go for a short little grid walk down there in Martinsville. You don't want to miss that. Five-time most popular driver Chase Elliott fractured his left tibia. If there's anything this sport has shown over the years, it's that these drivers don't just stay down. You best believe we can expect the same from this guy. But good news for Chase Elliott fans. Chase Elliott is making his return Sunday at Martinsville. With a 2022 campaign as strong as his, Let's go, baby. perhaps he can afford to give the rest of the field a head start. And although fresh faces can provide a temporary fix, we all know nothing's as good as the real deal.
Remarkably, just six weeks after breaking his tibia in that snowboarding accident, Chase Elliott is back behind the wheel racing today. Most popular driver, 2020 NASCAR champ. In qualifying, he had a slight brush with the wall. He qualified 24th, but he couldn't brush off a conversation with our Clint Boyer here in Martinsville. Yeah, the driver of the number nine for Hendrick Motors. You know, I, I got drugged down the hill there, then I went to the ER. will not be racing for the foreseeable future. I mean, I knew before I got to the ER that I was in a trouble, right? accident in Colorado. He will have surgery tonight. It's an injury of some sort. Not even a limp. All we do a horrible mustache, but not even a limp. Now, I like to keep things a little trashy. You're back. We're back at the racetrack. Yeah, it's kind of weird realizing what people do on the weekends the last couple <laughs> weeks. You know, when you walked in, I noticed you weren't even limping, nothing. Yeah, I just have got off my last crutch here in the last few days, so I feel good mentally. Physically, I'm not all there, but I'm, I'm closer <laughs> than I was a few weeks ago. What happened? What happened was I was out snowboarding and just parts of the, of the trail that are elevated than other sections and I just caught it at the right place at the right time and my knee decided that, that was the ball game that day, so. <laughs> the call to Rick. Were you nervous? Were you scared? Uh, hey, I messed my knee up. I'm going to the ER. I guess I'm gonna have to make this phone call, right? I better do so, it. <laughs> I better go ahead and do it. So I just kind of gave him a heads up to go ahead and start looking and start getting a plan together. You know, look, Rick's pretty cool, understands life happens. Um, you know as good as anybody. This can be physical at some tracks, but I think just the mental wear of 38 weeks, you don't have home and away games, you're always on the road. I'm totally guilty of, of taking a bad day home. I think having those disconnects and, and those ways to escape and get your mind right, for me, it's always been snowboarding, and I was a little nervous to make some of those phone calls, but um, they're like, hey, look, you know, stuff's gonna happen. You're being you, and don't have any shame in that. They've gotten better and better each week that Josh has been driving the nine car. You see Josh Berry run second at Richmond, all of a sudden you start getting the itch. So, as a competitor, probably the hardest thing, I would think, to watch that nine car take the racetrack. Yeah, it was um, just, they left my name on the car and stuff, so that was kind of weird, um, seeing that going around the racetrack. It was more just, man, like, I go to battle with my team and the guys, we're on the road 38 weeks a year, right? You know, we're around each other a lot, and I feel like I let them down. Man, that really sucks. I need to do everything I can and get back locked in. Chase Elliott will return. He feels good enough to go out there. He's 100% and all in and ready to go. We're back. What's the, the expectations? What's the goal for this weekend? I don't know what my goals are for the weekend yet, to be honest. I, I want to get back in the car, see where I'm at, see how I feel. You know, if, if there's more challenges than I can kind of see on the radar, then we'll just weather the storm. But Josh is here. There ain't no around, way you're getting in that car coming back out. Probably not, but <laughs> uh, certainly from my end, yeah, we're in a position where we have to win, and I don't see why we can't. Uh, it's good, good chat, Clint. Well, good guys, chat. yeah, it was great to hear him. Great to see him back at the racetrack. And he is back in a big way, and his fans are back. I found one of them, a matter of fact. Hey, Riley, can you help us? Who's going to win today? Chase Elliott! <laughs> there you have it, folks. All right. <laughs> well, it, the question I think fans wonder, thank you for dropping by. Okay, get a high five. Uh, physically, this kind of race, given his injury, and then you know you have Talladega coming up next yep. week. He was given the provisional, so he wins a race, he can be in for the championship. What yep. are the physical demands for him? Yeah, obviously, you know, this is one of the uh, hardest braking tracks that we'll go to. He's going to use this brake 800 times, 400 laps. So that left foot's going to get a lot of, a lot of workout. Uh, Talladega, probably not going to use it that much. But at the same time, I think if he wasn't ready, he wouldn't want to come back to this one. And this is a great test. I'm sure he'd be a little bit sore, but I, I guarantee you he'll be he'll feel fine throughout this race and be just good to go from here on out. You know, he's one of the, the Hendrick owns this place as we documented, and William Byron is the favorite, at least the Fox bet favorite. But Chase Elliott is up there. Is that unrealistic for him to win this Did race? Did you hear that I little lady him. right there? I guarantee <laughs> it. Do not count him out. Had a bad uh, qualifying lap, got into the fence a little bit, kept him back a little bit, but nonetheless, his car is extremely fast and he's good here, just like you said, Chris. Uh, he's prepared, he's been in the simulator a couple times I think it was important he told me he went to the simulator Bobby and what he was really focused on is waking up the next morning after mm -hmm. logging laps yep. there he was wanting to, to make sure that there wasn't aching and pains that next morning he said it was green light go went right back to the simulator log more laps a yep. boy's ready
Yep, just another reason to watch, obviously, see how he does today. Let's check on our Coca-Cola family of drivers and, of course, chase one of those. Josh Berry, by the way, is, as he alluded to, standing by just in case. Joey Logano, streak of seven straight. Martinsville top ten finishes. Talked with him. Virginia's Denny Hamlin. He's led nearly 2,200 laps here. Austin Dillon was third in the race last year. Got to let you guys go. Head up to the booth to call the race. Good having yep, you here. Enjoy the, the race. Should be fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to hang out with you for how many hours? Well, hey, <laughs> depending on that cloud right there, it could be a while. But, man, I'm telling you, this is going to be exciting. One of yep. my favorite racetracks. Yep. Cannot wait. All right, let's favorite. check in with uh, Michael, who is uh, on the gridwalk. Michael Waltrip, where are you exactly? Well, I'm right here with Bubba Wallace, Chris. And uh, Bubba's got a couple of truck wins here. First of all, you're loving it, I know. Yeah, absolutely. Always loving it. Tell uh, the folks at home about our special memory with your truck win here. I think you pulled a hamstring muscle up that last flight of stairs because you said on the truck broadcast it was two flights. It was actually three. Three flights of stairs we carried a grandfather clock up. Still chiming just fine? Just, just fine. Just right. Gotcha. See if we can find Willie B. Hey, William. How you doing, bud? How you doing? Uh, did Jeff Gordon show you the way around this joint? Yeah, so we came here in 2019. I drove him up here, and we walked the track, and it's been history ever since. It's been great. I've been out on the grid for about an hour prepping for this two minutes of TV. Everybody says you got the fastest car here. How do you feel? It feels really good. I mean, Rudy and I, Rudy's got it tuned up. It's good to have him back. It's good to hear that. Let's see who else we can find. Oh, hey, man, Bill Jer Jordan. How you doing, Bill? Kevin Harvick, tell me about this paint scheme. So special. Well, it shows my age. They give me grief about racing, uh, that I have raced in a different century, and this one is proof. So this is my first ARCA scheme at RCR from 1999. Oh, 99. I thought it was 79 or something. I knew you'd say that. He's old. Yeah, usually I'm getting no too. Hey, uh, oh no, I've had a, I've had a. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. Wrapping up the short track, short track racing for the moment. Last five races. When it's come to short track racing, there's your pole sitter, Ryan Priest. We've had five different winners. Who will it be today here in Martinsville? Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would ask you to please rise as you are able. Remove your hats as the William Byrd High School Naval National Defense Cadet Corps presents our nation's colors. Here to offer today's invocation, please welcome from Rich Acres Christian Church, Tim Hunt. Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here at the Martinsville Speedway and to enjoy this amazing race. And we pray right now for your protection over the drivers, over their teams, the NASCAR officials, all those who are working behind the scenes. And I pray a special protection over our first responders who are taking care of us here at the track and also all over our community. So, Father, we just thank you for this opportunity and the blessings you give us every day. And we pray this prayer in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome singer, songwriter, and Capital Nashville recording artist, Kaylee Hammock. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleam? Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight On the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly gleaming In there, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spain good banner yet wave or the
Chase Elliott is back after a six week absence and you're part of it all. Thanks for watching NASCAR on FS1 and the Fox family of networks. Welcome to Martinsville. Nobody happier to be here than Chase Elliott back after six weeks rehabbing a broken leg sustained snowboarding. Fans are happy to see him back. I'll bet you are too. Welcome to the NOCO 400 presented on FS1 by Mother's Polish on what is now a beautiful day at Martinsville but there is rain in the forecast and that may change the complexion of this race on NASCAR's shortest but one of its most action packed tracks. Hi everybody Mike Joy along with two fellows who have grandfather clocks to wind Bobby Labonte and Clint Boyer both winners here. What we see in uh, qualifying and practice yesterday that caught your eye. I tell you who brought the action Stuart Haas racing all four cars in the top 10 in qualifying including the pole sitter Ryan Priest going to be interesting you keep an eye on those guys and also the Hendrick guys there. This is without a doubt the best race uh, racetrack for Hendrick Motorsports and, and I got my eye on that 24 car. Yeah, well, I think qualifying said is done, but I looked at the long run speeds and I think William Byron probably had the best race car out there. You know, he's got two wins here. He won this race here last year. I think he's going to pick up right where he left off, but I won't forget Tyler Reddick. He, he, this is not probably one of his tracks that he would say I'm really good at, but yet 2311, both those guys were in really good yesterday. Tyler Reddick on top of the board right there, teeter with William Byron on long runs. Well, the last time NASCAR was here, they had a finish for the ages to decide who would race for the championship at Phoenix. And going into turn three on the final lap, Ross Chastain was out, but he made a video game move, or what those of us who grew up in the 70s would call a slot car move, where if you were in the outside, you just kept the hammer down and rode the rail all the way around to edge Denny Hamlin for that final spot in the championship four. We now call it the Hail Melon. It is now outlawed. Yeah, absolutely. I've watched it firsthand in the back straightaway. Never forget the move that he made and, and the difference that it made. Um, think about it. I mean, that put him in the chase, almost won a championship because of that very move. The, the financial gain, uh, let alone um, the fact that it truly changed the game, by the way. You know, the <laughs> 70s, Mike. The, the video slot game cars. Slot cars. Yeah, Clint. I'll, I'll, I'll get you set for Christmas. You'll, you know, cash, cash will love them. Well, a piece of the wall from the Hail Melon move has gone to the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Another piece of that wall was presented to Ross earlier this month. And the car, well, Trackhouse Racing has retained it. They said they're never going to give that one up. It's a piece of NASCAR history. Well, the safer barrier has all been replaced and repaired, and there will be no hail melons today. What we will have is hopefully 400 laps of great racing. Let's go trackside. And now, race fans, here to say the most famous words in motorsports. Please welcome singer, songwriter, and Capital Nashville recording artist, Kaylee Hammock. Drivers, start your engines. Four hundred laps await on the paperclip shaped half mile track that dates to before NASCAR 1947. But lots more history to be made here at Martinsville, including today. Imagine a scrapbook filled with all your favorite memories of 75 years of NASCAR gone by. Now imagine that scrapbook going 190 miles per hour. Have you ever? No, I've never! You don't have to imagine. You need to get to Darlington, where the drivers of today tackle the track too tough to tame just like they did your first time. NASCAR Throwback Weekend at Darlington Raceway. Get your tickets today at DarlingtonRaceway.com. Martinsville Speedway, one of NASCAR's original tracks. And Martinsville is just a full book of history. This place has been here from the very beginning with NASCAR. You go in there and you feel like, hey, you're, you're racing in the 70s and the 80s. The racetrack's really wide on the straightaway, but man, there's grass right there on a curb. Real. Trouble. And cars are in the wall hard. The engine just screaming to the brakes on fire. Oh, spin and turn oh, three. It's one of the toughest racetracks you'll ever race. Up and into the outside wall. I 
can kind of see a clock maybe in my future. Get another clock. I can't wait to wake up from this dream and know that when I stand next to that clock that it really did happen. Ah, uh, the magic of Martinsville. Welcome back to the NOCO 400 on FS1. Now, before he climbed aboard his Stuart Haas Mustang, Jamie caught up with pole sitter Ryan Priest. And first career pole for Ryan Priest. You're starting in the right spot. We know you had this speed, but what about long run speed to keep it here all day? Yeah, well, I think all the adjustments that we were making during practice kept making our, our older tires even better. So um, it's hard to say right now, but I'm highly optimistic because I know the guys that I got and they know exactly what I need. So we'll be just fine. Ryan Priest, first career pole, looking for his first career win here today, Mike. Has the fastest lap ever turned on this racetrack when he won the pole here for a wheel and modified tour race. Front row, Ryan Priest with his first cup pole and Daniel Suarez on the front row for the first time this year. This is your mother's polishes starting grid. Eric Almirola, top 10 in three of the last five at Martinsville. Another Stuart Haas Mustang, Chase Briscoe, top 10 in both races here last year. Martin Truex Jr. Keep an eye on Martin. You can't spell Martinsville without Martin. He's won three of the last seven here. And Tyler Reddick, fast in practice here. Kevin Harvick is the fourth and final and all of the Stuart Haas cars in the top 10 in qualifying. William Byron, two wins this season, and as Bobby mentioned, won here last year. Row five, Bubba Wallace, twice a winner in the truck series here, and Chris Busher, who got a win at Bristol last September. That is your top 10. But the big story is the return of NASCAR's most popular driver, Clint. Sure is. Let's go to that guy. Hey, Chase Elliott's boy and the boys up in the booth. You got us? Yeah, man. How's it going? Man, it's going. Can't wait to see you do work. It's got to feel good to strap back in that race car, look over and see all them shirts with a nine and your name on the back of it. Yeah, I'll be honest. It's been, uh, been really cool just to fans and, and everybody's support here today definitely feels good and, and feels uh, feels like I'm back at home. You don't realize how much your life revolves around this stuff until you're gone for a few weeks. So I appreciate that and uh, yeah, just ready to get back to work. We're looking forward to watching you. Good luck out there, buddy. Appreciate it. Y'all enjoy. Now today's race comes with a chance to win 5,000 bucks of Clint's cash. And it's for free. Play Fox Bet Super 6 by downloading the free app on your phone now. Enter your six predictions for today's race. And if all six are right, Clint's cash is as good as yours. Download Fox Bet Super 6. Start playing for free. All right, let's check in on Pit Road. Jamie Little first. Well, Mike, one year ago, William Byron dominated this race. And then in victory lane, he dedicated the win to his mom, who was there at the track after beating cancer last year. Well, his mom and dad are back here at the track once again, and they might see a repeat. William was fast in practice, fast in qualifying, good on the long run. Bottom line, 24 fans, you should be optimistic. Regan Smith. Well, Jamie, last time we were here, it was, of course, the Hal Mellon by Ross Chastain, where he passed five cars in the last two corners of the race to get through to the championship four. This time, a different set of circumstances, though. He is going to be starting 34th today, and he's going to have to pass 33 cars if he wants to win. Struggles in qualifying, relegated to that position. He told me earlier today the key is going to be not panicking early and taking what he can get. And in a weird set of circumstances, the pit box is directly across from where that Hail Mellon took place a couple months ago. Larry Mack? Yeah, Regan, we'll be watching what goes on on the racetrack, but we have to watch pit road. It will be a thorn in the side of these drivers and these teams. Very tight pit road, almost hard to run side by side. The pit boxes are the smallest on any of the racetracks we go to. It never fails drivers running at each other, either entering or exiting their pit box. And speeding Mike, pit road speed limit, 30 miles per hour, 29 pit road speeding penalties over the last four races at Martinsville. Thanks, Larry. Uh, Joey Logano dropping to the back of the pack. They discovered a water leak this morning uh, on his Penske Mustang. So that's an unapproved adjustment. He will go to the back. Uh, three teams had cracked brake rotors from practice. Uh, were allowed to make that change because NASCAR considered that a safety issue. So the offending rotors were changed without penalty. Two driver changes this week. Zane Smith, the truck series champ, 
uh, is in the number 51 for Rick Ware Racing. Uh, Cody Ware facing an assault charge has been suspended by NASCAR uh, as part of their behavioral policy. And the 78 has Anthony Alfredo aboard. He is subbing uh, this week for B.J. McLeod. The weather is questionable today. Now yes, we have is. to make it to the earlier of the end of stage two or halfway for this race to be official. The end of stage two is lap 180. Anything after that would be an official race, but you can bet if we get to, uh, to uh, stage three, we could be racing the rain. Well, I think that's just it. I mean, looking over your shoulder, that those clouds are building and looks like a little bit of moisture in them. And I think as long as it's a little bit of moisture, Bobby, you may <laughs> see those old rain tires come out and get on these hot rods. Yeah, we saw that obviously in the truck race uh, Friday night. And I was surprised how fast they ran in the, in the wet conditions. And uh, it wasn't rainy, but they definitely dried it off. Well, here we go for 400 laps in the NOCO 400. Ryan Priest, Daniel Suarez, take the green flag. Battle to get down now. Suarez can't get clear of him. There he does. Gets down. Out of patience. Yeah. Priest got a good start there. You know run a lap on the bottom and somebody on the outside but uh, cleared him so now he can kind of rest a little bit. Now Briscoe on the outside in the 14 side by side with Truex. Remember Briscoe had that broken finger and that has still not been resolved. He wanted to get through Martinsville before going to see the doctor for surgery. So another week in the race car before he's able to get that taken care of. He's going to need to get down speaking of taking care of there's a, a whole teammate. That's yeah. a that's a good teammate right there. Kevin Harvick let him in. It's a pretty nice favor to have there, Bobby. Yeah, I would say that, you know, obviously right now a teammate helps you and uh, you're running out there and you want to, you don't want to be tearing your car up. You, you got to be careful and these guys realize that. So they're probably going to give somebody a break, a little bit of a break early now instead of uh, later on. So Chris Busher unable to get inside. Same with William Byron. There's turns three and four. You see very little rubber down. Here in the early going. We see that early speed in Priest's car, Stuart Haas, and you can see Almarola looking to the inside of Suarez as well. It's going to be interesting if they can keep this speed for a long haul. Obviously, have a ton of speed in these race cars with Stuart Haas racing um, that they brought for these drivers this weekend, but uh, I want to know how they, they look on lap 50. Todd Gilliland and Chris Buescher side by side. Gilliland missed the top 10 by, what, two one hundredths of a second yesterday. He's able to keep Buescher to the outside, and Kyle Busch uh, fills the opening on the bottom. Yeah, and back, back to what you said, Clint, about the SHR cars. I mean, I think it's going to be, it could be 30 laps. You know, we could see, we could see them run like this for a while, but I think 25, 30 laps, we'll kind of see if they're, if the transition goes from a good qualifying setup to a good race setup. And it's, it's not saying that it will, right? I mean, it yeah. might just be, hey, you got fast cars. Um, but, it, you know, I, there may be something to that, maybe, you know, a little bit more rigid or something like that to, to you know, really lay a, a fast lap time down. The key is forward drive. You have to be able to get off the corners, not upset their there you go, tires. Same thing down here. Single file back to 17th where Brad Kozlowski cannot get in line and Austin Dillon uh, does him no favor. That'll get your heart rate up lower left of your screen. Well, what you try to do is exactly what Brad's doing. Get in a corner really deep, hold him down, uh, pinch that exit off for the three car of Austin Dillon. If you could do that, uh, maybe he gets loose and there's your opportunity. Yeah, if you, if you could drive off the corner and, and get somebody where they can't feel like they use up all the racetrack, uh, then maybe you can get in front of him. But if not, if you're going to do like that, just settle him behind you. Here we go. Oh, three wide. Pretty tight racing. Yeah. Tight. Oh, really tight. Yeah. Well, not much give there, was it? No. Well, Austin Sidrick got the worst of that. Here's Burton and Chastain to his inside now. This isn't just, ca isn't just casual contact, is it? No, that was that was a little bit, maybe a little aggressive, and they kept going in turn three, so and now they're going to get straightened out. <laughs> maybe they won't see each other for a couple more laps. And look what it did to him for the next corner. Uh, it was three wide getting in that corner, got knocked out of the way. Now he's three wide again getting in a one. Plus six, seven, eight spots there pretty quick. Tell you how difficult a pass it is here. Joey Logano's got a good car. He had to start in the back. He's passed one car.
since the start of this race and now is on the inside of his Penske teammate. Doesn't Austin Cindric. Sorry, doesn't surprise me. No sun out right now. Track's got a lot of grip. Everybody's kind of gridlocked, bumper to bumper. As Bobby was talking about, the, the grip level starts to go away. You start losing the grip first off of the corner, spinning the tires. Then you'll start getting loose in. Then you start separating, uh, you know, positions there, and you can make some hay if your car's right. He's going to have to be patient. Really no place to go right now, so try to manage those tires to be good on the backside of a run. I think the best thing he's doing is just following Ross Chastain. We talked to him earlier, and, you know, he knows he's got to be patient and to go out there. But Ross might not be, but with the leaders start coming around, uh, the the closer they get to the back, the more aggressive they're going to have to be to try to get to stay in front of them. Starting to get some rubber laid down now. You can see right there on the right sides, both ends of the track. It'll keep building that up. And what that is, it just keeps it slicker and slicker and slicker. Then you have to start straddling it, trying to get yourself a straight drive off. Well, contact here as A.J. Allmendinger muscles his way past rookie Ty Gibbs. You know what I like to see is a little bit like you know they they have to change your line a little bit to catch that a little bit of that rubber that's being laid down not like maybe not like it used to be like when they had a lot of marbles but at the same time looking down there I see a few cars you know kind of spinning a right rear a little bit so that's maybe that's a good sign that the grip's going to go away and you'll have to manage that uh, manage your, your car a little bit better. Alex Bowman moving forward. In the uh, Hendrick media availability, a lot of the questions, of course, were for Chase Elliott, who is just back. And Alex Bowman quipped, you know, they didn't make a commercial for me when I came back. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's okay. Not the most popular driver. But he did his talking on the racetrack and did it well. Bowman up in the top 20 now. Ryan Priest has run off and hid. He is one and a half seconds ahead of Suarez. Only driver right now in the top 11 looking for his first cup win. This was the site of his first modified tour victory back in 2008. Ford Chevy Ford, the first Toyota Truex in fourth place. Ryan Truex, uh, rather Ryan Priest started on pole. And is running away from the field at Martinsville after 18 laps. Martinsville, Virginia, the center of Henry County and a longtime furniture and textile center. A lot of uh, dressers, headboards, and sweatshirts have rolled out of this area to places around the world. In fact, the Ridgeway clock that is presented to every Martinsville race winner since 1964 used to be made in a factory just two miles down Old Sand Road south of the racetrack. Ryan Priest has led every lap. Uh, you could say stink up the show, but Daniel Suarez is starting to close. He's now within one second of the race leader. William Byron came in here as one of the favorites. He's now in 11th place. I don't feel very good. I feel pretty tight center, but really loose off. So far, I get that thing slowed down on entry. So I think that early now shift helps you a little. Uh, he's been passed by his teammate, uh, Kyle Larson, who is up seven spots. Uh, Ryan Blaney has gained nine. Here's an update from Jamie. In the 99 of Daniel Suarez talked to him this morning. He said, we struggled for the last couple of years when we came here, but we had a test last August and we hit on something. They came back in the fall and finished 12th, so he felt really good about the package they brought here in the setup. And it showed in qualifying, Mike, obviously qualified on the front row, and that's their best effort here and this season. Regan? Jamie Joey Logano had to go to the rear after having a leak overnight that they found this morning. So far, though, struggling to move up the pack, only up to the 32nd position. This is exactly what Joey was worried about. He said that if we get down early, it is going to be extremely difficult today to make up time. That race car right now will not cut the center of the corner for him. The front tire is not working. Well, he is less than uh, half a straightaway from the race leader closing in on him and Ross Chastain. Yes, they are. They're coming fast. I'll tell you who else is coming fast is Suarez and Almirola to the back of Priest. Priest is having a lot of trouble in this lap traffic. 
Yeah, he's definitely given up a little bit of a uh, little bit of grip, and uh, the traffic's not helping him out. Of course, you know, they, they don't want to. The, the cars he's passing, they don't want to go lap down. By the time they get to uh, to Daniel and um, and Eric, they're probably going to give that give that up. So that that doesn't help him a lot uh, to make uh, to make hay there. And as soon as he broke free, got around that lap car, he really took back off though, laying some fast lap times down still for Priest, 34 laps in. And here's your biggest mover. Ryan Blaney from 29th to 19th. This is where it's going to start separating. Guys are going to start slipping, sliding around. You see some links of the chain starting to spread out a little bit, creating opportunities. Well, I saw during the the commercial break, Blaney was using the front bumper a little bit more than maybe some of these other guys, which has probably helped him move up. But I, what I'm really glad to see is uh, the track widening out. You know, I mean, the rubber's laying down a little bit more than I anticipated, and looks like guys are running a little higher if they have to to, you know, to make some lap time. Second and third place here, Al Marola staying uh, close on Daniel Suarez. They're a little more than a second behind Ryan Priest at the right edge of your screen. So Priest won his first career pole in the ninth race of the season. Last year, Cole Custer drove this number 41 for Stuart Haas and won his first career pole in the ninth weekend of the season. But when you have a driver like this that has not led a lot of laps in cup and you see him coming up in your mirror, yes, he's the leader, but do you race him differently than if it's a Chase Elliott or Kyle Larson coming up on you? Yeah, I, I would think uh, sometimes you might. I mean, there might be a little bit of a uh, little bit of that, but I think he's got a lot of respect out there. I think it's a racetrack. You have to. You have to stay on it. You cannot let, give up positions on this racetrack. You go a lap down here, you're in big trouble. You can hold a guy off big time here. Be a real thorn for them. Make that car as wide as possible. Even the fastest car. Pulls down around. Priest. Priest has trouble. And he has now led more laps today than in his entire cup career of a couple of years. So, and I'm thinking about this too, about Ryan Priest. You know, obviously he, he's run a few cup races now. He ran a few races last year, but you think about a lot of these other guys that he's racing against for here, he's shifting, right? So that's something that he really wasn't used to. Obviously he didn't have that much experience at it. Uh, so he's out there leading, doing a lot with that. So, uh, so hats off to him because he's not used to it as much again as uh, some of these uh, fast uh, competitors he's got to race against. Coming up on Ty Dillon in what has quickly become the world's fastest conveyor belt here at 41 laps. Cool racetrack. Love it. Well, na great neighborhood feeling coming in here. Look at all the campers and the folks that have come here to see some better short track racing than we saw here a year ago. This new package with the short spoiler, the reduced strikes, less downforce. Uh, hopefully will produce better racing today. This aero coverage is provided by Goodyear powering the race from green flag to checker and every mile in between. Goodyear more driven. Ryan Priest trying to get past Ty Dillon and that has brought Daniel Suarez to now within seven tenths of a second as we have a look at Denny Hamlin in ninth. And we're looking at it for a reason. You see those cars getting bigger and out that windshield. Him and the five Kyle Larson both laying some really good lap times down. Doesn't surprise me a bit have that speed that long run speed out of Denny Hamlin. Always good here. Fellas one thing I'm not seeing that is characteristic of Martinsville glowing red brake rotors front rotors into the corner. It doesn't seem like they're developing as much brake heat as what we are used to seeing here. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's not nighttime yet. Is that the only reason why I'm not sure? But yeah, I mean, you're right. You you would usually see that. And so, you know, they're using a lot of brake. We see the lap times and, and they are going fast. So, uh, but yeah, I don't know that, uh, you know, obviously later on the race, I'm sure we'll see it, but you're right. I'm surprised that we don't see any more brake heat than this. Well, I think Larry told us yesterday that they actually changed the duct work a little bit for this race from a year ago. Um, a, a couple cars actually changed rotors, had some brake issues uh, from qualifying and practice yesterday due to a little bit of overheat. That's something that NASCAR elects to, to let them do without a penalty of going to the back. Uh, 22 and a couple others were, uh, were ones that did that, but it's not time yet. You okay. start pushing this thing towards the end of the race, you're going to see those brakes starting to glow. Yeah. Start to see front bumpers 
Just saw Briscoe right here. He following along, moving Truex out of the way. The reason he did that sense of urgency, his teammate Kevin Harvick's telling him, you better go, boy. These cars are getting big in my mirror. So that's a change at fifth place. Briscoe moving up puts three Stuart Haas Mustangs into the top five. Led by former modified champ Ryan Priest, who has led every one of 48 laps so far and is closing in on defending cup champ Joey Logano to try and put the 22 one lap down. We're underway 48 of 400 laps complete at Martinsville. Fifty five laps complete and here's a moment that is twenty six years in the making race leader Ryan Priest to the inside of Joey Logano just as they race together as six year olds on the Silver City quarter midget track in Meriden Connecticut. Now Logano is a two time cup champ. His path to the top was a lot quicker and smoother than Priest's but well here they are two old friends and adversaries going at it again for the lead at the highest level of stock car racing. Kind of pinched Joey there. I thought Joey give him a little bit more fight than that. He did. You know, you, you see Suarez and Almirola right there on his uh, tail. He had kind of stretched the lead back out until he caught Logano, which doesn't surprise me a bit. And how about this? The next one up to bid is Ross Chastain. Don't see that very often. Logano yeah. and Chastain going on the lap down on the brink. Yeah, that. Uh the story, the story about about those two right there with Priest and Logano about the quarter midget race, and I guarantee you, uh, one's smiling and one's not. Right. <laughs> they yeah. might have been good, might be good friends, but one's not happy. But yeah, the 22 car. We talked a little bit about the 41, maybe losing a little bit of grip, but yet that 22 car really hadn't shown anything yet. Joey, well, I, Joey Logano's finished top 10 the last seven races here. He's off today. I thought Joey would give him a little bit more fit than that and I was just telling myself he may have to move him. I'm surprised he did it. He did. He yep. moved him. That's what it's going to take. So what about the next one Ross Chastain. You better be careful moving that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have heard that Chastain is the hardest driver to move on the racetrack. That's on the driver because that he's usually doing against all the now. moving. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> you got to catch him to move him. So Martin Truex is backed up to 11th. Jamie. Well it was an interesting day yesterday for Martin Drex Jr. and the 19 team. They felt like they had something wrong with the car in practice. They thought they found it made an adjustment had a great qualifying effort. Driver was very happy but right now they're just fighting for grip. No lateral grip for Martin Drex Jr. who continues to fall. He's back in 11th now. Alex Bowman trying to break into the top 10. Now 19 laps to go in the stage. First stage is 80 laps. Next stage is 100. The final stage 120. Got to be careful when you're attacking that Bobby. Um, cars rolling out from underneath of you. Lateral grip rolling out from underneath of you. Probably getting into the corner, rolling through the middle a little bit. Um, tighten that up too much. You have trouble getting off the corner. You drive a push into it and try to knock the wall down. Yeah, I mean that that is that's always a struggle, and you can see the 19 really really fighting the wheel. And uh, but you also know that you only got a few laps left in the stage. Hopefully you can make the right. Uh, call when you do make a pit stop on the on the chassis adjustments and the air pressure and get a little bit better but uh, you know he shouldn't have to worry about going a lap down at least so he don't need to do anything crazy. Chastain with pretty good drive off here it doesn't look like Priest really wants to press the issue too hard and he's under no threat from behind from Suarez at the moment. I'm a believer this Priest is a real deal that car is very fast. You know the question was was this thing going to fall off We're 64 laps in still the fastest car you give him some track position he'll just yard second and third place. As soon as he breaks free he drives off from him. That another one is fast. Another one that's coming Clint is Tyler Reddick Reddick up to fourth place. Last time around he had the fastest lap time he and Chase Briscoe. And there he is right on the bumper of Almirola. Look at his line yeah. drove in on the outside didn't work that time slid up. But if he gets that thing rotated and drives off that's how you cross them over. It's going to enter high. Get to, see looks these cars loose. He's going to rotate here. He's going to get underneath I, Almirola. Xfinity fastest lap of the race Ryan Priest that was back at lap four. Tyler Reddick's quickest lap was lap six almost everybody.
their fastest lap so far within the first 10 laps of the race. Clint, I think that Tyler really wants to go up there. I think, he, I mean, I think he's, I think he's trying to get that drive off. He's trying different things. You know, he's, he's got a few laps left before the stage break, and he's, he's catching those guys, and he's like, well, how can I pass them? You know, he's catching them, but how can I do it? Don't want to tear the front end up. So I think he goes in there. It looks like he turns down. I think he wants to try to get a straight shot off of him and try to get underneath. Him. Well, he's putting the pressure on Eric, and all of a sudden Eric's putting the pressure on Suarez. Got in the back of Suarez a little bit. Got him roughed up. This may be a two for one here. Opportunity for Reddick. Stays on the outside. See if he can get this thing rotated. Might be able to pass them both here if they get to play around with each other. Here he goes to the inside. Nice. Exactly what I was thinking was going to happen. Not clear. Eric drove that thing off in there. <laughs> he did, did he? Almirola careful not to give him enough room on the inside to go three wide. That's good racing. All four Stuart Haas cars in the top five at the moment. Their last top five finish here was Clint's win in 2018. How do you feel about that, buddy? Feeling like I want to back out there. <laughs> <laughs> Love this racetrack. <laughs> Love it. Such Chris, a challenge. Christopher Bell is your point standing leader. The highest in points into the regular season makes the playoffs. And then everybody's seated in order of wins with ties broken by points. There's where we sit so far among the top 16. Reddick for third. I think Reddick's at the car. He can go low, pass him, he runs up high. I think it again, it, you know, shows me that the, the track is you can move around a little bit and he's still making speed with a 19 car was falling back. He's going forward with it. Larry Mack? Yeah, I've been watching Tyler Reddick and remember yesterday he ran 53 consecutive laps in that one practice session we had and I'm seeing the same thing even when he was working over Suarez. He does not use a lot of brake. He lets the car really roll through the center of the corner. He doesn't stab the brakes. He just kind of own them casually a lot less than most of the other drivers I'm watching. We've seen a lot uh, here at Martinsville where a driver would spend eight or ten laps trying to work a groove in up top trying to lay some rubber down up there. Uh, it's a good place to pass when everything's working right but not sure we're there yet. You know just like you know Larry was talking and just like practice he really rolls into three with a lot of speed. See how much more speed he carries into the corner than Almirola right in front of him. Which as they get into turn three he'll close that gap. Quite a bit. Arcs it up just a little bit. Likes a diamond. This car is pretty sporty. Here's the SMT data that yep. the teams look at. And I'm looking at that steering data. Watch this one right here. That kind of shows who's tight, who's loose, freeness of that race car. They have this data in real time on the pit box back at the war room, and uh, we get to sh occasionally share it with you. Kevin Harvick moving on his teammate Chase Briscoe for a top five spot here. With four to go in the stage. Stewart's Haas has four stage wins since the start of the 2021 season. Just four. These cars are sporty. They came to play this weekend. Going to have to make sure that we take care of business on pit road. Spots are hard to come by out in this racetrack. Cannot afford to give them up on pit road. No mistakes. Solid stops is all I need. Priest and Almirola about one second apart, first and second. And Ross Chastain still able to hang on to the lead lap here. His lap times have slowed into the 2160 range. It's going to be big if Ross can hold on. You know, I think that uh, you know, obviously that would give Legato the the free pass. Uh, but yet at the same time, I mean, I, you know, you don't want to be you want to be able to get on pit road and get out that way without you know maybe beat some cars out instead of having to get a free pass. But you sure. see how much better Priest's car rotates that five eighths mark. He can get to the throttle car. That means the car's rotated and ready to get back on the throttle much sooner than Chastain was. Ryan the Priest ball a little bit has his first ever stage win in the NASCAR Cup Series. Good way to bounce back from a bad frustrating last weekend in Bristol. Yeah, sure is. Ryan Priest 
from Berlin, Connecticut, led every single lap of stage one. Stage one in the books. Time for our Credit One Bank. Ones to watch. Who you got your lie on? At 41 ball, Ryan Priest, man. First stage win. Awesome job for them. But I'm watching his pit crew. I want to make sure that those pit crew can answer this call. That boy's putting some pressure on those guys today. I'm going to go with Kevin Harvick. I mean, I'm thinking the closer. You know, the Stuart Haas has definitely got some speed. He's in sixth place right now before the pit stop. He's going to hang out there. I think he's going to be the one to watch at the end because he always is. I'm watching Team Hendrick, Larson, Byron, Bowman, 9th, 10th, and 11th. Yes, I took more than one, Clint. <laughs> you can talk about a driver or a team or anybody you want. And, you know, it's only the end of stage one. we got a long way to go as they keep rising toward the top. Uh, Jamie and Larry, who are you watching? Yeah, Mike, I'm watching Ryan Blaney. Started 31st. He has made his way to 13th without the aid of a caution. Always runs well here. Top five in both races last year. Yeah, I'm going to watch Martin Trix Jr. Started fifth, fell back to 14th and then that stage. But he's won three of the last seven. He knows how to get his car good when it counts. And that's your credit one bank. Ones, plural, to watch. <laughs> Reagan. Mike, the 10 car of Eric Alvarola on pit road right now after a good start to the race for him. Too loose in the center, needs a little drive off, but told the team, do not get me too tight through the middle of the corner. The 45 of Tyler Reddick, that car was getting looser as the run went on, getting into the corner, needs a little help at the two-third mark of the corner. Jamie? Daniel Suarez in the 99 lost two spots on track. Got a little bit tight, but really loose entry, really loose on exit. They're going to try to fix that up. Ryan Priest led all the laps so far today, more than any of the laps combined in his career. Car's pretty good. He's uh, turning through the middle. Is their strong suit? Good stop by the pit crew, Mike. Boy, he jumped right out there. There's your race off pit road sponsored by Ram and Priest held station over Suarez, Almarola, and Reddick. Good job, boys. Yeah. Stage one complete. Ryan Priest has led every lap so far. Coming up next, USFL kickoff weekend continues. The Pittsburgh Maulers open their season against the New Orleans Breakers next on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Let's take a closer look at brake temps at Martinsville with Larry Mack and the Toyota Cutaway car. Mike, anytime we go short track racing at Martinsville, that little half mile track, a big talk is about the brakes of the race car. So let's go inside our Toyota Tech Center and take a look at our Toyota Cutaway car and look at some of the temperatures the brake components will be seeing today. When you look at the brake caliper itself, 300 degrees Fahrenheit, the rotor, 1,400 degrees, and where the pad meets the rotor, 1,700 degrees. Now, the big concern, Mike, is at 1,400 degrees with the rotor. That's why today NASCAR is letting the teams pump a little more air to the center of the rotor to try to keep that temperature down just a little bit. Thanks, Larry. So far, so good. As we get ready for stage two, with Ryan Priest holding the lead after his pit, first pit stop of the day, but almost a calamity there before pit road had opened. Uh, Priest apparently misunderstood the signal as to whether he should pit or not, and uh, almost came to pit road a lap before it opened up. Uh, we listened in. Just listen to me. I'll always let you know if it's open or closed there. So I was seeing the red light was obviously on. Yeah, no, I, I get it. It was just confusing me. I'm like, are we open or are we closed? Yeah, it wasn't just you. They were, they were confused behind you as well. Almost, he almost dragged a whole bunch of cars down pit road with him. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, was, he's leading a lot of this race first time out there like this. I mean, you know, you, you might think that, uh, you know, pit road is open, wasn't sure yet. And, uh, yeah, luckily, cool. it, luckily it didn't affect him. Well, if all four tires would have been under that box, it had affected him. <laughs> all right, Priest has chosen the inside on Daniel Suarez. They're going to restart just like they did 90 laps ago. For stage two, green flag.
Still Take double wide. Cola. Yeah, and all the way through the field, double wide, but everybody being very respectful for now. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously starting off stage two and uh, you know, got new tires on it too. So, you know, you think right now you want to make as much, uh, as many passes as you can. So uh, I'd say they're being cautiously aggressive. Uh, but Ryan Priest got the heck of a start. You know, it's just like qualifying showed, those Stuart Haas cars are extremely good on a short run. Eric Owen really knew that, took advantage of that, got around Suarez, joining his team up front, his teammate, excuse me. Joey Logano was the first car one lap down at the end of the stage, so he is back on the lead lap with the free pass. Pretty dicey racing here with Blaney, Austin Dillon, and Ty Gibbs. They're bouncing off one another off the floor last lap. Finally get it sorted out here. That's for 15. You can kind of ride two by two, do some racing there for two or three laps. But if you get hung on the outside, like I see Briscoe right now, he's going to need to get that sorted out. They'll start freight training him on the bottom. Connected that link, and you won't be able to get in. Yeah, and, and you know what? Like Brad, he doesn't want to give up a, a spot to uh, to let that uh, let that let him get back in. Three penalties on that round of pit stop. Zane Smith speeding, exiting. Kyle Busch and Chris Busher had equipment interference and both had to restart at the rear. Tenth place on the right. Truex and Briscoe. Chase Elliott, 28. He's dropped two since the restart. Yeah, I just kind of mired back in traffic with Chase. I really thought that, uh, you know, he had speed, better speed than this in, in yesterday's practice for sure. I think you get that car some track position somehow, some way. If a caution, untimely caution comes out, opens up an opportunity for some strategy, you might just see some of these these back, uh, you know, teams running in the back reverse that. Now Eric Almarola got around Daniel Suarez to move up to second. However, we're ready for you. We're ready for you. If you're going to come to us, we're trying to find out. We're unsure. What do you mean you're unsure? Didn't know if he got the lug nut tight or not. Well, that's what they're yeah. trying to work through in the number 10 pits. Regan. Like just a couple of seconds ago, they finally came back on the radio and told Eric they think that they are good. So a little bit of question mark here if that loose lug nut is loose or not right now. Well, the thing is, it could have been tight to the wheel, but if the wheel was not tight to the hub, that can produce a problem later. You're right, but I would think if that's the case, Mike, it would be violent. It would, you would even get it up to speed, and, and you would uh, you'd be coming back down pit road under caution. Well, there was some something going on because he obviously had it in his voice that he was definitely, you know, concerned about it. I guess my concern would be would it be would it be the right front or the left front? You, you know, I mean, left front might not be quite so critical, but right front uh, balance would be bad. Sometimes a brake shake, um, you know, is a thing here, but he would know that and and, and what he's feeling different. Kevin Harvick uh, launched in the top five, and that's where he sits, fourth place, Jamie. Mike, if you look at the lap-by-lap -lap comparisons yesterday, Kevin Harvick in the 14 was about the best with fall-off. They were really happy with it. As for today, he said he started getting loose as the run went on, a bit worse than yesterday, so they made a wedge adjustment, put those four tires on it, and he's up to fourth now. Yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, Kevin is uh, pretty solid there. I mean, he's out there uh, making laps again early in the race. I think Kevin sees that lap 400 is where he's going to get to. And, you know, he's trying to feel his car out, make sure he gets it right. But uh, car looks pretty, uh, pretty smooth right there. I know, I know he's smooth on the throttle and uh, doesn't have a lot of movement in his hands. Leading laps pays how much? Yeah, right. I know you're right. <laughs> exactly. That's what I think Kevin Harvey has. You know what? He knows which lap pays the most. That's right. 
Almirola within half a second of Ryan Priest now. With Suarez third. And uh, here's one of the questions in Clint's Super 6 game. How'd you answer this one? Which of these drivers will have the better running position at the end of stage two? And by how many positions between Blaney and Logano? That's the tough one. The second part of that question is going to be extremely hard by how many positions. And I'd have never guessed it's as much as it is right now, but you never know. A lot can happen here. Right now they are 15 spots apart as Logano just got the free pass at the end of stage one, which went caution free. Stenhouse gives. Keep an eye on that one. That is two very aggressive drivers with a no quit attitude. I don't think Ty's going to give him a lot. He don't want to be behind him, so. And exactly the same conversation yeah. in the other car. <laughs> well, we used to call it trading paint, just like we used to call the bumper the chrome horn. What do we call it now? Wrinkling the wrap? I don't know. It's pull just, the decals off of one another. Yeah. yeah. Finally got it sorted out. Gibbs is the winner. Inside. <laughs> it got sorted out clear, for the clear. moment. Marks and rhythm here. Don't overdrive her entry. 110 laps in, caution free except for the stage break. And Ryan Priest for Stuart Haas Racing has led every single lap so far. Got to have one. Uh, Brad Hutton, one of our pit cameramen, just uh, hustled over there to grab one. You can't just have one of those. No. And they are good. And they are nuclear red inside. I mean, they're just, they're unique. It's the Martinsville hot dog. There's Brad, hard at work, <laughs> shooting the concession stand and getting a hot dog to boot. And two bucks. Yeah, $2. $2. That's yeah. a deal. That's a heck of a deal. And they're being That's enjoyed awesome. all around the place today, except up here in the broadcast booth. Hmm. 121 laps complete. Ryan Priest, Eric Almirola, Daniel Suarez, Kevin Harvick, and Alex Bowman has made his way up into the top five. Let's get an update on one of his Hendrick teammates, Regan. Mike Chase Elliott, of course, making his return this weekend, but not going quite the way that he wants to right now. He slipped back to the 28th position, struggling with the rear of that race car. Just said it feels way too stiff to him. Can't get the car to do what he wants in the corners because of that. Feels like it's up in the air and stiff all the way through the corners right now. I can't say the same for his teammate Bowman, who has been flying his way up through the field. Passed Hamlin a few laps ago to move into the top five. And last time around had the fastest lap on the track. He's a tenth, tenth and a half faster a lap than these first three cars. Extremely fast, Jamie. Yeah, and yesterday that wasn't the case for Alex Bowman. He started 23rd. He practiced about the same. But the good news for him, Blake Harris, the man on the left, is crew chief back on the box. They have great chemistry together. They just started working together this year, but they've been adjusting on this race car before the race and that last stop. They made an air pressure adjustment, so he's coming through the pack and doing well. And Mike, remember, he was out with a concussion in the fall race here, so he didn't have this tire. They're just learning on the fly, and it's paying off so far. Well, lessons uh, well learned and applied. Good timing, too, because he's catching these leaders as they're catching the lappers. Going to have more trouble in those lappers. That Bowman's one of the only cars that can make passes, quality passes, that is on fast cars. He went around Denny Hamlin like he was tied to a tree. Priest putting uh, J.J. Lealy a second lap down. Zane Smith, the next car ahead. And there's Bowman coming into the picture. Low and straight. That baby's really rotating good around the corner, enabling him to get off around that corner. Straight drive up off, very low, tight to the curb. Straight drives. Now, a lot of speed. And I would think you gotta you gotta believe that the change that they, they made is probably gonna relay to the other three hit cars. You know, as far as the next you know adjustment, maybe if they are fighting the same thing. Uh, tried something because he's a definitely the quickest hinder car out there. Exactly what I was thinking, Bobby. If I was, you know, Larson or, or uh, Byron, I promise you, you're hearing chatter on their radios. Hey, what's up, 48? <laughs> yeah. Okay, what is up? Got? Woke that baby up. Yeah. Lap 
180 will be the end of stage two. Now Zane Smith is on the lead lap in the 51, trying to keep from going one down. And uh, Anthony Alfredo and Ty Dillon ahead, who are already one down ahead of the leaders. Ryan Blaney, it seems, uh, takes off, makes up a lot of spots, and then plateaus. Uh, in stage one, he's kind of stopped moving forward at 13th place. Here he is at 15th uh, after restarting 13th at the end of stage one. Same shift in there. It just doesn't take much effort at all with these new cars and the way they shift. It was a big deal at first, thinking, man, they're shifting out yeah. there. But as you can see, it doesn't take much effort to make those shifts. Yeah, that's, uh, I guess the next thing is a paddle shift to make it a little bit easier, yeah. but. Uh, Pretty smooth with the wheel, Bobby. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't know why he didn't have the speed that he had earlier, you know, but uh, he also didn't have that till later in the run as well. So uh, they might have went wrong on his adjustment as we see the 48 go by the four car uh, for position. So that's, uh, to your point, fast. Alex Bowman up to fourth. I guess with the shifting now, four times a lap, you could almost refer to this as a road course with all left turn. <laughs> Guys, I'm looking at my lap time graph here, and it's unbelievable. All the rest of the cars, you know, I got five or six. Turn cars. two. Harrison Burton goes around, and that will put us under the first caution for cause of the day. Lap 133. There's five or six cars on this graph. They're all on top of one another, and the 48 in blue is an inch below everybody. Pretty impressive. I believe that was just a single car spin. Didn't see. Didn't see any contact. It is the second caution of the day. Ooh, I didn't see Eric Jones. Oh, the 43 and the 21. They have a history here. Pit road is busy. Regan. Mike Eric Almirola liked his race car better this run than the first, said he thought it was going to be a better long run car, and Denny Hamlin in the 11 was too tight for the short run. Lots of left front lockup. Jamie? Daniel Suarez, he's hanging in there. Top three fired off tighter than before, but freed up as it went on. The 41 of Ryan Priest tightened me up for takeoff, and he needs a little bit better run through the corner. Let's see. They did their job again, guys. Oh, that's going to be close. Coming off pit road, they were three abreast. And we'll have to see it at the line. Two tires on Gilliland. There's the race off pit road. Wow. Chase Elliott fans happy to see him back and wearing their colors. Well, the speeding police at Martinsville, the timing is all electronic, nothing subjective about it. Welcome back to the NOCO 400 on FS1, presented by Mother's Polishes. And the speeding police have nabbed the 23, the 19, and the race leader, the 41, got a little too quick of a jump out of that last pit stall to try to beat everybody to the line. Dang it. Yeah. Well, that's not good, but it's going to be exciting for us. Well, I saw it. <laughs> you know, he did. Those guys were side by side, and man, that thing launched out of that box in a big way. Um, but I, the one I like, how about Chastain? Let's shake things up. Um, stayed out from 25th. I think you can net gain there. I, I don't mind that. I don't think you're going to fall clear back to 25th. Uh, I don't know. I, I might have to. I'm not gonna argue that, but I'm gonna say it yeah, might be it a little bit. Like it. It, it looks like looks good on paper right now, but we'll see. If they get a long run, you know, I mean, we, we, we could see that give up some. Listened in on Ryan Priest and company. Well, as we were talking in the trailer, he said, do you think we could just go hard out of our pit box? Which me and Scotty both was under the assumption we felt like we could, but we're not really the number one box. We're kind of the number two box, you know? Well, that's exactly right. Yeah. If you look at the number one box right in front of him, and that's the difference, because I thought you could out of that number one box floor go as fast as you want all the way out. Um, difference is, just like he said, that ain't the number one box anymore. Major bummer. Yeah. 
So Priest will restart in the rear along with Bubba Wallace and Martin Truex. Saturday on Fox, some of baseball's best show out in an early season showdown. Pete Alonzo and Francisco Lindor lead the Mets against Brandon Crawford and the Giants, or you'll see the White Sox battle the dominating Rays. All begins Saturday at 4 Eastern on Fox. 32 lead lap cars for this restart. Zane Smith got the free pass on this caution. This, uh, they just ran the first lap today that Ryan Priest has not led as he is under penalty for speeding, exiting his pit. Well, major bummer for Ryan Priest, but for a fan, I'm curious to see how he can get up through the field. Obviously, the fastest car set on a pole, led all the laps. Um, I want to see if he can pass because some of these other guys have had a lot of trouble back there. Yeah, it's not even halfway yet. You know, we saw the 48 car was able to pass, so, uh, you know, that was good too. Jamie? Well, in the 24, William Byron had issues on pit road as well. The right front, they realized it wasn't tight, so they had to hit it a second time and fell back. A frustrated Byron on the radio said, we need to get it together. He'll restart here back in 19. You knew it was going to be, you know, you hear Larry talk about pit road, speeding penalties and all this stuff. It's because the emphasis is there. These, these spots are hard to come by on the racetrack. A lot easier on pit road if you can hit all your marks. Todd Gilliland will restart third. They took only two tires on, or excuse me, start fifth. Two tires on that pit stop. Here we come to the Geico restart zone. Teammates on the front row. Good getaway for Chastain on those older tires. Al Morola wants to force the issue and does. Sure did. Yeah. Bush coming through. Oh, Larson's in the side of Harvick as well. Larson got under him and it got into you. See Kevin not very happy about it. <laughs> yeah. Moved over and blocked. I think Larson elected to back out of that one. I just moved. Suarez drops in in third. And he gives Alvarola a shot back. <laughs> Saw that one coming. Uh, sailed it off into turn three. Oh my gosh. I didn't know still inside, 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 middle, middle. Carried him up the racetrack. Todd Gilliland capitalizes on the inside. Three wide to turn one. And they're going to make see. it. That, that would frustrate me. I, I yeah. agree with Almiroli. It's okay to get into me a little bit, whatever, moving, that stuff happens. You move me up so far that we get past, both of us get passed by a car, it's too far. Denny Hamlin just made a three wide pass in the second pack to clear that group, as we still have great action up here for fourth place. About these no tires and two tires, Larry, huh? Yeah, with 40 laps on the tires, Clint, I, I did not think that that was going to work that well, but so far it's working good. And remember, it's a short run to the end of this stage. When they took the green flag, only 38 laps to end stage two. Look at this. Ryan Blaney missed turn three, went way up the racetrack. That set up a three-wide situation. Now he's trying to recover against Stenhouse. And they're two by two by two all the way back through the field from him on back. Since the urgency is definitely picking up. Priest cleaning up something. He's only moved up one spot so far. Not able to go anywhere. Pretty much a gridlock in front of him. Tyler Reddick breaks away from Larson. That will be for seventh place. And here's Hamlin inside of Bowman for ninth. This is going to change Chastain's day. All these teams. We will be paying attention, but that was a bold move and it's going to pay off. There's no way they go clear back to 25th with 30 laps to go in a stage. My bet is he wins. Bit of the bump and run from Suarez to Almirola, who would get it right back one lap later. Almirola running out of racetrack. And then there's what happened to Blaney. That's how he missed that corner. He got quite a bump from McDowell, setting up the three wide. I'm thinking you may have saw something 
Th rolls reverse in the corner prior to that. Right, yeah, something happened before that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Larry tells us the lap before Blaney had drop kicked McDowell going into turn one. Exactly. So, there you go. I like the aggressiveness picking it's up. Picking up, yeah. for sure. <laughs> So Al Marola, after all is done, ends up in seventh place, maybe eighth. Only half Daniel's fault. His father tells him he's in there, be aggressive and block it every time in the three on restart. Yeah, his father used to think he was a driver. He's not. Oh boy. Frustration. It's usually on the one that loses on the losing end of those things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hey, Clint, I'm about to apologize. That that one car is hanging out better than I thought he would. I was like, nah, those 40 tire lap tires are not going to do it, but pretty big wrong. Well, I kind of, I think they're, it hinted to this. And nobody can go anywhere in the back. Yeah. I mean, look at Prius, uh, Prius back there. It's past one, maybe two cars. Anybody that's been back there. Chastain, that car right there was on the brink of going a lap down in the first stage. And all around this half mile as so far in the first half of this race track position has trumped tires and now the sun is out full uh, if there is rain it is pretty off in the distance we've got full sunshine for drivers and crew chiefs to deal with now i don't see any rain in, in my future here <laughs> so Good. We're, we're looking at a lot of sunshine out, out this window and all i right. think it's changing these cars around a lot you know the 48 car that was extremely fast not so much just got passed by brad keselowski suarez same thing even uh amarola that car is not as good as it was when the sun was uh was not out and we're under cloud cover this track has definitely gotten slicker and some of those guys have lost their handling on their cars i think that's kind of good though don't you think well, I mean, you know, that they're trying to keep up with the race track. Is. Well, yeah, but you know, you're trying to keep up the racetrack and you got to really be, it's not going to be just consistent uh, all race long. So maybe with this change, you're going to see people that are going to make some good adjustments. And if they, if they do, they're going to go forward. If not, they're really going to uh, struggle. What I think you're going to see more of, well, I mean, it's obvious, you're going to see more people gambling on strategy. That's paying off in a big way. No tires and two tires leading this field. Denny Hamlin is the man on the move. Yeah. A lap and a half, he passed Tyler Reddick to the inside. He just dove underneath Daniel Suarez. As Hamlin is up Kislowski. in the top five. Sorry. It's okay. Ross Chastain had never led at Martinsville before today. He's been out front now for the last 24 laps as we take you Fox side by side. something greater toyota let's go places next on behind the series let me tell you about the greatest roster ever assembled the monster the outlaw and you can't forget about the boss sometimes you just want to eat your heroes the subway series the greatest menu of all time home internet what a pain in the hey neighbor try t-mobile it sets up so fast it's like Wi-Fi that runs on 5G. Home internet from T-Mobile? Wait till you see. Tell me more, tell me more. One cord's all that you need. Tell me more, tell me more. Don't you worry about speed. Being a NASCAR fan just got even more rewarding with the free Fan Rewards Loyalty Program. Earn reward points and redeem them for merchandise, tickets, VIP experiences, and so much more. Earn points from the track or at home. Check in on your phone, complete your profile, or play fantasy racing to score your first points. Join and start earning today. Visit nascar.com slash rewards to learn more now. This week on Fox Saturday Baseball, Francisco Lindor powers the Mets against Brandon Crawford and the Giants. Or the White Sox. 
take on Randy or Rosa Reina and the Reds. It all starts at 4 Eastern on Fox Saturday Vegas. Get on this level. 15 laps to go in stage two. Here's an update on the Coca-Cola racing family of drivers. Denny Hamlin keeps slicing his way forward. He's up to fourth. Daniel Suarez in the top 10. Austin Dillon, Chase Elliott on the lead lap and for the lead. Ross Chastain, who did not stop on that last caution, about to lose the lead to Kevin Harvick, who did. There's your guy, Bobby. Right here, clear. Take it all the way. His teammate's going to follow suit right on him. Briscoe's really impressive. Those, those cars woke up in the sun. Now, the other driver on a different strategy was Todd Gilliland. He was second for much of this run. He's fallen to sixth. Four of his, uh, uh, two of his four cup top tens have come here in the last three races. Former truck winner here. All right, Briscoe trying to take advantage with Hamlin looking on. And then Reddick. I think, I think Ross is going to have to give up some spots here, don't you think? Just uh, try to maintain a, at least a good position. Doesn't, doesn't need to try too hard here. He's got a good gap behind Reddick. Obviously, Hamlin's going to be with Ryan and then Reddick and a big gap before that two tire uh, Gilliland and, and Keselowski. It's really coming on strong. Now there's Gilliland to the outside of Keselowski, also on that alternate strategy, though he did get two tires on the last stop. Where almost everybody else got four. Still possible, man. That one's going to come back here really quick. Chastain's dropped to fifth now, has a gap to Keslowski and Gilliland. Now, of the drivers that restarted in back, remember 32 cars are on the lead lap. Martin Truex, after his penalty, up only one spot. Chris Buescher up two. Uh, Bubba Wallace up two and Ryan Priest up about six positions from where he restarted. Still a long way from the front for those drivers. Yeah, Priest, you know, talking about him, he's having to completely change his driving line. Everything he's done is braking. You're having to drive it off in the corner harder, abuse the car more. It's such a different way of driving when you're mired back there in traffic and having to manage traffic, trying to get up through them. Making good progress, though. Well, as a, as a driver, you, you know you have a fast race car, but you haven't had to pass anybody all day. you got to really think about uh, how to take care of it, you know, and how not to, to go out there and be, you know, pace yourself to the point where you can, you know, make the next adjustment, hopefully get some pit strategy or, or pit stop will be better, and you can gain a couple spots here and there, but don't don't go out there and blow it too soon. Bobby, I'm a little bit surprised with the Hinder camp. Um, they shined a lot more yesterday. I mean, obviously, we, we were talking about Bowman uh, this last run, but they shined yesterday in practice. I thought they were going to be the camp to beat, whether it be the 24 or even that nine, maybe the five. Um, Bowman, the one that I didn't mention, I didn't think was a factor yesterday, is the best car. Yeah, and, and you think about practice yesterday, looking at it was William Byron was the fastest in, uh, in the long run, and today he's not. So, yeah, what happened? You know, what happened overnight to make that difference? Five laps to go in stage two. Kevin Harvick leading at Martinsville for the first time since 2016. Jamie. And I talked to his team this morning and they said, we've got a different setup from our teammates here and we have seen a happy Harvick. Happiest he's been at Martinsville in quite some time. They made some nice adjustments today, just building a little bit free. But guys, the sun is out, the track's getting slicker and that plays right into Harvick's hands. It also plays into that 11 car, Denny Hamlin. This is right in his wheelhouse. Managing grip, taking care of those tires. Screams Denny Hamlin. Got, got him written all over it. And look, he's running him down a little bit. Getting to the bumper. Second place, Chase Briscoe. Three to go on the stage. Harvick half a second up on Briscoe. That's a 1-2 for Stuart Haas. Toyota's 3-4, Hamlin and Reddick. Kislowski's forward and fifth. The first Chevy is Chastain in sixth. And that gamble of not stopping is going to pay off very well. Kyle Larson uh, now first to the Hendrick Chevys in tenth with Bowman 11th as they chase down Almirola.
you don't think the crew chiefs are saying when this when we pit, do not speed. We see what happens when they get stuck in the back. There's no way to get back up there. It's a juice worth the squeeze, buddy. Have to not beat yourself. Conditions like this at racetracks, hard to pass on. Do not beat yourself. For the first time since 2020, Kevin Harvick is a cup stage winner. Wow. From Bristol, hard to believe. Hamlin, Reddick, and Keslowski. Kevin Harvick, first across the line. and Jamie inside the race day studios. Listen, Stuart Haas Racing has come to play today, sweeping both of the stages, but usually when we come to Martinsville, we're talking about Hendrick Motorsports. They just have one driver in the top 10. What are you seeing out of that? Yeah, I mean, Hendrick has won 27 races at this track. We talked about it in the pre-race show. Uh, and William Byron was the story yesterday. Had the best, fastest lap, half 10 lap average, five lap average, uh, but just has not been able to make up ground. But the weather has changed. We heard, talked about the sun coming out. Track's gonna get slick. We'll see what they can do now. Pit stops coming up. Your Ooh. advice? Don't don't beat yourself. <laughs> don't don't speed to gain one spot and lose like we saw Ryan Priest do earlier. Absolutely, Mike. That's been a very busy place and certainly changed some of this racing. Sure has, Shannon. As we are at the end of stage two, this race is now official. We have crossed through two stages. And here are the stage points earned today. Harvick, Briscoe, and Reddick, each with uh, 15 through the two stages. Look at Chastain. Pit road will open this time. No chance he'd have had those stage points without that gamble. Paid off for them boys. 25th, 6th. Kevin Harvick leads them on to pit road. 31 lead lap cars. Harrison Burton will get the free pass after stops are complete. Regan? Mike, some very good changes for the 11 to Denny Hamlin. Love the forward drive off the corner of the race car. That run just a little too tight at the two third mark. And watch the exit here. Spotter Chris Lambert is going to call him out of the box as they expect the 22 to come around. And the 14 to Chase Briscoe just wants to be tightened up a little bit. He's slipping and sliding in the sun. Jamie? First stage win of the year for Kevin Harvick. He said he wants a little bit more of that same adjustment. Really good center and off the six of Brad Keselowski. Really good run there. Just needs to gain some stability without losing the turn for the six. There's your race off pit road sponsored by Ram. Chase Briscoe out ahead of Kevin Harvick. Kozlowski, Hamlin, Almirola. With everybody stopping for four and a big log jam at the exit of pit road. Let's see if old Harvick will answer. Hey, happy Harvick. It's Boyer up in the booth. You got us? Yes, sir. And the old hot rods pretty fast. Came to play today, huh? Yeah, they've done a nice job. Obviously, you know, this isn't uh, my favorite place, but uh, the car's driving good. You know, we just have to keep the track position and stay in a rhythm in here. We've been fighting loose, so we've been trying to uh, get that a little bit better. It was better that session. I just got to fend them off for the first 25 laps there, a little better in the corner. Uh, then, then it starts to come around. So happy to show uh, these real tree and Hunt Brothers Pizza colors, and we'll keep digging, man. All right, buddy. Good luck. Thanks for your time. Yes, sir. Kevin Harvick is your stage two winner as we get ready for the final stage of this 400 lapper at Martinsville. With a thousand eyes in a good day sky. Welcome back to the NOCO 400 on FS1. Uh, Grandpa, now that's a, that's a theme here at Martinsville. There's the grandfather clock that will be presented to today's winning driver and a duplicate to the winning car owner. And our director is a grandpa. Congratulations, Reams Michael Kempner, born April 11th, mom and baby, and of course dad, and grandpa, all doing well. Artie's been handing out Martinsville hot dogs to everybody this weekend. <laughs> all right, yeah. congrats, Artie. Way to go. Nice. I want to say, I, I'm sorry, there's more to this and we'll find out, but those guys, those kids that were pushing this clock, they actually built that clock in, in their class. Um, we were out there doing the pre-race and they walked by and told us that. I'll, I'll find out what school and what class that was, but that's actually, those kids that were pushing it, built it. Somebody's taking it home today. The Ridgeway clock has been a tradition of Martinsville since Fred Lorenzen won the first one in 1964. Did you know that, Bobby? No, I did not know that. See, my man does. Man, see, I'm learning so much up here. I'm, I'm just glad that you guys kept me because last time I did this, I only got one stage in. <laughs> 
think y'all get rid of hey, it. Uh, have a good look at that pace car because that's your first look at the 2024 Ford Mustang uh, that paces the field here. I All drove brand it. new V8. You, that's right. You've driven it. Drove it Thursday, as a matter of fact. Pretty cool. How about that? I mean, uh, the actor turned race car driver, Frankie Muniz. Well, Chase Briscoe, whose pit crew just ripped off a 9.9 .9 second stop, has the lead over teammate Kevin Harvick. Here's some Harvick audio. I want to do it. You don't want to do it? I do not want to do the teammate restart, no. All right, where do you want to, where do you think? I think bottom, that's my choice. The teammate restart would be where the driver on the inside lets the outside driver go ahead and drop down to the bottom. Well, this should get interesting as they hit for the Geico restart zone. said that worked out anyway would you I mean for sure for sure obviously uh, I think Kevin was thinking on the inside you're gonna maybe get uh, get a little advantage being down there maybe off the turn two and it obviously looked like Brad didn't get the start he wanted so uh, worked out for Kevin back under cloud cover I think it's important to keep this up see I, I think it definitely plays in favor of you know one car or the other now NASCAR has wet weather tires if needed. They use them Friday night here in the truck race for the first time in one of their national touring series on an oval track. Had a pretty good result with them. So here's the deal, and I want to stay on that for two seconds here while we're watching the races. NASCAR finally, in our meeting, our competition meeting with NASCAR, Bobby, called them wet weather tires. They didn't call them rain tires. And I think that's important to, to as we continue to develop and, and sell that as a pitch to our fans, you know, don't lose track and think that they're going to run in the rain. We've learned that lesson. In the wet, yeah. we can run. Yeah, it, it, it's not. It, it goes back to I think it's real. It's like it, we're not going to run in the rain, but we'll run on a wet track. So if it's not raining, and uh, we saw this, I, saw, I was here and I was like, man, they're racing in it. But they were drying the track, racing in it, but it was it had stopped raining. So it was just uh, to help dry it and uh, get some laps in. And those good years will get you back to green flag racing sooner than if you have to wait until the entire track is dry to put on slicks. They put on a good show with them. I think it's interesting. I, I like watching them. I, um, you know, Coda was probably too much thinking back on that race, but uh, I ran, um, you know, in wet weather at, uh, at the uh, Roval in Charlotte and loved it. Had a blast out there on. Learned a lot. Ryan Blaney back on the attack 13th is close to the highest he's run and for most of this race battling with Alex Bowman ahead and Corey LaJoy right behind. Ty gives in 15th right behind LaJoy ahead of Almendinger. Up front, Briscoe and Harvick just a quarter second apart. And 11 right on the bumper of Harvick. We talked about Stuart Haas. 11 is slowly but surely creeping into this picture. Just keeps getting that car faster and faster. That's the Denny Hamlin that we expect at Martinsville. Hamlin owns five grandfather clocks for Martinsville. He shouldn't be late anywhere. He knows what time it is all the time. Right? <laughs> In every part of his house. Pretty funny you say that because anytime I ever did an appearance with Denny, he was always late. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe like Jeff Gordon's got like 11 or 12, so maybe he's never late. Five wins for Hamlin in his first 19 starts here, but none in his most recent 15 Martinsville races. And uh, look at this year. Well, Zero top fives in the first eight races this year. I read that he said on his podcast, he called a shot. Said we're going to get on a roll with this 11 car and it's going to start right here this weekend at Martinsville. Might just happen. You know, Clint, I think of Denny. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Byron's out there uh, watching him go through the corner. 18th. Yeah, I mean, uh, not as good. You know, yesterday we talked about that earlier about how the 24 car was so fast. And again, I was like, what, what happened overnight? You know, does the track change that much, or did they make a small adjustment? Think it's be better, but or did other people make better adjustments? So, uh, and it, you know, it's got to be frustrating for that 
uh, for that team uh, knowing they had a fast car yesterday. How about it, Jamie? Yesterday, we all thought Byron was the car to beat here. Yeah, Mike, and the car hasn't been terrible. He didn't have track position to start, but they've had not one, but two slow stops. Had another issue when he came in. He was nosed in. They tried to get the right rear wedge adjustment, and he had to stall it, back it up, and get it again. So another slow stop for him. That's how. I think the difference from yesterday to today is, is track position. I mean, look at the difference it made with Chastain on old tires, for crying out loud. 25th place, couldn't go anywhere, almost went a lap down. Last car in the lead lap in the first stage and led the last, you know, half of that stage before getting passed by Harvick at the end. Look, now the track has gone half and half. Turns three and four in shade, turns one and two in sunshine. That's a... Uh, it kind of makes it tough on, on on what to do. But, you know, thinking about like Denny Hamlin, uh, you know, knowing the racetrack and knowing your race car and what you want here. He didn't win five clocks, five grandfather clocks just falling into it. So, you know, I can see him making those small adjustments and getting better as the race goes on. Bubba Wallace and Kyle Busch still trying to overcome penalties, as is Ryan Priest. None of them are back up into the top 20 yet. 20th is Chase Elliott right now. I was just looking at that, too, Mike, and you're not going to overcome that. You're not going to do it on that racetrack. You're going to have to do it where it came from, in the pits or uh, strategy calls, something. It's going to be over there, not on the racetrack, not from that far back. He's there. He struggles up off. Hundred ninety-two laps to go as some darker clouds start building uh, to the southwest and before they get here let's have Larry give us a look at today's right combination. Well, Mike let's take a look at Denny Hamlin and crew chief Chris Capehart. This is their fifth season together. They have 16 wins including two Daytona 500s. They've made the championship for three out of four years. They even won an Xfinity Series race together back in 2017. All these numbers together could lead to Denny getting his sixth Martinsville win and not only their first win of the year, but maybe even their first top five, maybe the subway right combination to get there today. Hamlin right now third one second back Larry with Harvick in between Denny Hamlin and leader Chase Briscoe and there you're looking back from the Hunt Brothers Pizza Camp at Hamlin 190 laps to go in Martinsville Virginia. Dude, what are you doing? I'm protecting my car. That's too much work. WeatherTech is so much easier. Laser measured floor liners up here, seat protector and cargo liner back there. Nice. Out here, side window deflectors and mud flaps and the bump step to keep the bumper dent free. Cool. It's the best protection for your vehicle, new or pre-owned. Great, but where do I? Order WeatherTech.com. NASCAR's best chasing the clock, the Ridgeway clock. That goes to the winner here at Martinsville in the NOCO 400. NOCO, originally a contraction of no corrosion. They've been in the battery business for a century, and they make great battery chargers and jump packs and batteries. Great products. They're sponsoring today's race. With 180 to go, Chase Briscoe out in front here for 36 laps. We've had uh, only four lead changes among four different drivers today. Kevin Harvick has led 19 laps and is in position. We've been Go talking there. about Denny Hamlin. There Go he is, folks. There. He's running these leaders down. I think he might be the only car that has anything for those Stuart Haas cars. Another one of those Mustangs is Eric Almarola in fourth. Now Almarola is back uh, five seconds back of the leader and four and a half back of that lead trio. Yeah, and I'm looking at uh, at Brad Keselowski. You know, he was uh, he just spent a few laps. The five car of Kyle Larson was on his back bumper. Uh, very impressive. You know, he's got back running in the top ten. Uh, he had a good streak early in the year. Uh, you know, he's uh, found this racetrack to be to his liking today. Well, let's sell Larson to talk to him this week and. 
He said it, it, this isn't his best racetrack. He doesn't love it, but he's been very solid today. Um, holding steady, sixth place. Anything can happen. Got to stay steady here. Tyler Reddick has not led today. He's currently running seventh. He's been in the top five a good part of the afternoon. And then I look at Todd Gillen. You know, he's up there still. He's in eighth place right now. And, you know, they made that two-tire stop uh, as he gets a little bit of wall there. But, you know, he made that two-tire stop, got some track position, uh, stays after it. And, uh, you know, he's staying up there in the, like I said, in the top ten. So pretty solid effort. Again, last weekend a great run as well. Daniel Suarez started outside pole. He's running ninth, but he says he has an issue entering the corners. It's a brake pressure issue. Uh, the pressure at the pedal just does not feel like it did early in the race. And you have his teammate Chastain, the only one that really gambled on the strategy. I mean, Gilliland took two, but they stayed out, let a lot of laps fix their day. Um, was a 25th place car, almost, um, you know, was let a lot of laps in that stage. And they're for sure back in this thing. Christopher Bell took the lead here last fall with five laps to go and went to victory lane. He is 11. Bowman, man, he really had a good run there. Um, changed tires, it just hasn't been the same. He was lights out two sets of tires ago. I don't know, they made an adjustment there. They might be migrating back to that. Keep an eye on the 48. Brian Blaney carrying our advanced auto parts cam. And again, Blaney uh, seems to take off well on the restart and then plateaus at about 12th, 13th place where he is right now. And I'm going to say Ty Gibbs, you know, I, I, I sit here and watch him. He really has been quiet. I uh, really haven't seen a lot uh, out of him. He was he was a little bit two, three wide early on, but, you know, it seems like he's calmed down following Ryan Blaney. Uh, is, you know, pretty good pace right now. So uh, probably just working on his car, trying to get to the end. A.J. Allmendinger was trading a lot of paint early in this race and now has uh, settled into a rhythm. Restarted 14th and he's running within one position of that. That's what I like about this. Corey LaJoy right behind him. 16th place for Corey LaJoy. That's overachieving for that car in my opinion. He's done a great job this year. You're uh, beating Byron, Elliott, uh, Priest at lead laps, Logano, Bush, Kyle Bush. Pretty good job for them boys. Ricky Stenhouse has been kind of up and down uh, within the top 20 for much of the day and also a good bit of side by side. You see a little damage uh, to both. The, let's see three out of the four wheel well openings have a little bit of damage there. I'm no surprise. Yeah, and I think, you know, Willie B. I mean, obviously watching him, this is not the day that they were looking for. I think, you know, you saw him clip before uh, in the pre-race show and, uh, you know, he looked like he was all smiles and, you know, just by what we saw yesterday and uh, qualifying thought he's going to be, uh, be up running up front. He's just not doing it. <laughs> My friend Eddie. He called me this morning and said, man, who's fast? I said, keep an eye on that 24 <laughs> car. Boy, I uh, I was wrong. Sorry, Eddie. Justin Haley running in 19th. He's been a top 20 car a good part of the day. And, Ch and Chase Elliott has climbed up from running 25th and 6th for uh, a good part of this race. Regan can update us. And like they've been making gains on this race car all day long. The rear of the car has been the issue. It was too stiff early on. They have continued to make that better for Chase, though, to the point now where he's saying the drive is getting better, getting more like he needs it. Still needs help, but they're getting closer. Well, now we get to the drivers who've been in the penalty box or started at the back for one reason or another. Uh, Ryan Priest was our pole sitter. He has climbed to 21st after having to serve that penalty because his pit stall was in box number two. There are 43 pit boxes. They don't use three of them. And the reason they don't use box number one is so Priest can't just fire off and accelerate off pit road and win that race. He's got to come up and get to pit road speed, which he failed to do. You said penalties, Bubba Wallace. Not a happy camper on pit road today. Lost three spots on the first stop of the day, and then it was downhill from there. Got caught speeding on the next one. Mired in traffic now. Joey Logano is 22nd. Logano had found a water leak. The team found a water leak this morning. They made a change, had to start the race in the back, and he's been playing catch up ever since. Yeah, look at Chris Busher. You know, he's uh, he's next in line there. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, quiet day. You know, not not the day they're looking for, but uh, you know, still got a lot of racing to do. And you know, he's a 24th right now. And uh, the good thing about it is he has been lower, you know, so so he's go, maybe he's going forward. Let's we'll see. Well, he had that penalty back at lap 80, along with Kyle Busch, who is right behind Chris Busher. This one surprises me. He's been very solid week in and week out um, and his teammate Austin Dillon. They're both back there struggling today with the RCR Bulls.
Let's check with Jamie. And another one who's really struggling is Martin Truex Jr. started the race top five. And they anticipated this track would be tightening up today, so they freed him up to start the race. And he has just been too loose. They've been working on it, but he needs a little bit of luck. And for starters, this is looking out to pit road. This is inside the hauler of the 19. It's a Chucky doll. Get rid of the Chucky doll. Get rid of that bad luck. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> I would say Larry we've only had three caution flags in this entire race and two of them were planned for the end of the stages so crew chiefs you haven't had a whole lot to do to work on these cars you really had not Mike and I just heard Jamie's report on Martin Trex Jr. when you've got a car that that's loose you know you need major adjustments you know you, you need wedge you you've got to adjust air pressure so yeah if you're spot on these long green runs are right what you're looking for, but if you're struggling, it is a long, long day. All right, we saw Eric Jones at 26. Here's Austin Dillon in 27, who often runs in the top 10 here at Martinsville. And we're back up front with 160 laps to go. And Chase Briscoe, who's run more laps in the top five today than in all previous races this year combined. Welcome back to the NOCO 400 presented on FS1 by Mother's Polishes. 151 laps to go as you watch our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. Chase Briscoe out in front by two tenths of a second. This is how a lot of these statisticians keep up with the race. Might not be by long, and it's no longer his teammate Kevin Harvick behind him. Denny Hamlin passing him, and right on the back bumper of Briscoe, Hamlin laying some really stout lap times down. Very good on a long run. How hard is it to let this track come to you? I think it's really hard. I mean, it, re it really is hard because, um, you know, you don't want to, as you see, Denny go inside of Kevin, and I'm sure Kevin gave him a little bit of break because he knew his car was faster. But, you know, I mean, you, the track, the rubber lay down, uh, you know, you, you, the grip level and, and what your car is doing, the balance, and, you know, you just got to be really smooth and make every lap count. And, uh, but yeah, you got, you know, you just got to read the track as much as possible. As we see what Denny does, he goes up a little bit, comes down a little bit lower, tries to get a little forward drive, try to get up underneath uh, Briscoe right here. Hamlin to the inside to make the pass. And it'll be the first time Denny Hamlin has led today. If he's able to complete it. Still there. That's your door. Still up there. <laughs> Briscoe's not going away quietly. No, no. He definitely, you know, pinching him off a little bit off the corner. And I think that's, you know, as a driver, you don't want to lose that, uh, lose that lead. And, you know, doesn't mind racing him right now. Denny sliding loose underneath him. I think that's why his car's so strong. I think you can see it, it's free. Seems like it keeps turning where some of those other ones are getting tight. I know that's something they worked on. Thinking back of yesterday's practice, I remember him saying that he didn't like his front end in his car. Uh, said that it just didn't feel like there was enough load in the front uh, front tires. And I guess, you know, for Denny, again, Knowing this racetrack and how good he is here, he knows how to feel that. I mean, feel those little things that uh, some guys with less experience might not know. They might have to rely on the crew chief. Or, for his case, the the driver kind of knows a little bit more as exactly what he needs to to roll the center of the corner to to get some speed up off. You know, Briscoe keeps running like this. Tony and Gene may want to break a finger on his other hand. <laughs> you know, he hasn't had surgery uh, on that broken finger. He's going to have it Monday. He said, "I need to get through Martinsville uh, before we do anything with this." And I'm going to run it to win it. And here he is. Well, the good news is if anybody makes him mad, he doesn't have to actually physically <laughs> put that finger out the window because it's already splinted up in fashion, true fashion. So it ought to make that at least easier. Man, he slid up. Kevin Harvick almost got him. Yeah. You see that middle finger? Rods and screws to be added. There we go. Right there. Which one? Cracked all the way down. Yeah. That's the good one. <laughs> It has to be hard to drive that car with the splint on it, throwing that finger straight up like that. Um, didn't slow him down. Did a great job at the dirt race. The adrenaline takes over. You know, thinking about that, thinking about that boy in the nine car too. I think the adrenaline takes care of those guys. Reagan, 
Well, Mike, think back to the last caution that we had in that 14 car. He was very concerned about the long run speed of that race car. Felt like it was falling off too quick, slipping and sliding, getting into the corners too much as we see his teammate Kevin Harvick going to the inside right now. They made a wedge adjustment on that last pit stop, which normally slows the stop down. They still beat everybody out of the pit stop. This pit crew has been on absolute fire today. Johnny Klausmeyer's crew chief knows that's a weapon he can use as this thing plays out. That car right there is fast. 10 car. Almarola is catching these teammates. He's faster than them. Probably the only one that's holding pace with Hamlin at the moment. He's come a long ways back. Come from a long ways back. Clint, you said it at the end of stage one. Here is Stuart Haas. First, third, and fourth. And but for the miscue by Priest on Pit Road, would probably have all their cars in the top five. Still out there, door. What Still a there, day. Door. For those cars, there's the running order for Stuart Haas. That's a that's a picture right there that they uh, if Priest were there they would put that at the office for sure <laughs> at this point in time uh, for this year. That'd be on the Christmas card right there. Yeah, yeah. Corey LaJoy way up the racetrack in turn four, and we almost we almost had a three wide situation there. Yeah, I think I saw Priest get in the back of him. Didn't like it. He went in there and gave Priest a shot really hard. Um, Shot him up the racetrack. That was the I think that was payback. Missed a little bit. Ended up costing him what three or four spots there. Keep it cool. Got to stay in this thing. He's done a good job so far. I'm talking about Corey LaJoy. Lost some positions. Was running 16th all the way back to 24th now. Shane Smith on pit row already one lap down and will lose a lap at least with this stop. So. One player, Clint, is still alive in today's Fox Bet Super Six content to win your contest to win your five thousand dollars. Well, man, this is such a tricky thing, Bobby. You know, I'm rooting for him, but I also know if he wins, he's taking my money. But I think he can do it. I think whoever that is, he or she, I think if they if they got that pick right, they deserve it. Those were some really tough questions this week. Fun, free to play, guys. Fox Bet Super Six app. So much fun to interact with that. Follow along on social media. You guys are good, good race fans, and it shows with you making those solid picks each and every week. Yeah, obviously, uh, watching the screen here, I'm looking at Denny Hamlin. Uh, he went past Kyle Busch on the on the inside. Uh, you know, fear Kyle would have been a little better now. And uh, yeah, it, it, you know, didn't see that coming. I thought Kyle would have been a little further up, but uh, obviously he's a lap down now. Yeah, he just never recovered from that penalty at lap yeah. 80 again. 133 laps to go. Denny Hamlin in command at Marcusville. There's a thin line in the NASCAR Xfinity Series between winning and losing, between being the future and being past, between headlines and tailspins, between making history and being it, between the sweet taste of victory. I came for one thing only, baby. Fumes of defeat in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. There's a thin line between being a name they know and being a name they'll never forget. For 46 years straight, more of you have trusted Ford F Series trucks to help save the day. Stretch the weekend, haul, or tow. Just about anything, anywhere. That's because they're built Ford tough, and it's why Ford F-Series are America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. And for that, we thank you. Because this isn't just about our capability, it's about yours. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Get five boneless wings for one dollar with any burger, only at Applebee's. I need to try it first. Yeah. Get crafts, sporting goods, restaurants, and the future of NASCAR all from your neighborhood. DoorDash. Chase is back. Better get ready.
type why you do that. 126 laps to go. Let's have a look at the NOCO race summary for today. You see at the top of the screen on our Fox Race Tracker, we've had only one caution for cause, total of three counting the stage breaks. Five lead changes or four lead changes since Priest started from the pole and stuck up the show for 135 laps. Denny Hamlin, the current leader, 22 cars on the lead lap, all the way back to Bubba Wallace. Just three caution flags. Priest and Kevin Harvick, the stage winners today. Really hard to believe. Bobby that you, you can come here these days and see all that green flag racing um, you used to have some serious carnage at this place. <laughs> yeah we haven't seen that you know a lot lately in uh, the past couple years but you know obviously Denny Hamlet is just really really moving on right now. Corey LaJoy and Kyle Busch got together on the front straightaway and it almost turned Kyle into the front stretch inside wall and there's the payback right there. Yeah. He didn't like that, did he? Well, he's been into it with two or three guys. Here's what we're talking about. This was a lap ago. I don't know what Nagu means, but it's translated to near in my way or something because he definitely moved him out of the way there. I don't know what I don't necessarily think that one was no that, that was the one. payback. I don't think no, that was the one. I think something else one. happened. There was a bigger one. There oh, was a side yeah. slam coming down the front straightaway. I didn't, yeah, I didn't say that didn't warrant what I just saw. No, what you're seeing there is I think 400 laps of frustration. Well actually the frustration that you know with the joy is came in the last 50 laps. I mean he was 16th. 50 laps ago, 29th now. Wheels have fallen off the bus. Well, let's listen in on the seven, Corey LaJoy. I'm playing bumper cars out here, man. I'm trying to get a caution. You get back to the eight, you park up to four. Oh boy. Well, that's the yeah, one. Yeah, that that's about. the one that warranted. Right. That'll get you hot, yeah. Bobby. <laughs> and they get you repaid. Yeah. The caution <laughs> might be the seven if the if the eight comes back around to catch you. I think I, I honestly with the frustration the eight had and him needing a caution, I'm surprised you didn't see more of that. How about, How about Bubba? This? Give me a big shot. I don't know what he's doing out here. Wow. Well, he's trying to get back on the lead lap. Still I've never seen somebody do that to the boss before. I passed him and put him a lap down and I'm really not happy about that, is he? Must not like the way he passed him. Might have moved him. I wouldn't really care. <laughs> I'd like I better follow, you know. Now Wallace is also trying to come back from a penalty. His was for speeding at lap 133. Todd Gilliland in the top 10 here. Uh, they had that strategy call where they took just two tires earlier and it's paid off for them. Todd Gillen's done a great job this year in that car. Um, really has rise of the, uh, you know, the opportunity. There was some talks. I think he got uh, caught off guard with, with um, Zane Smith actually filling in some of the races, getting some races in that car. Didn't like that. Went to work and made it better. So Ryan Priest, who got a self-imposed penalty for speeding, firing out of his pit box uh, earlier at lap 133, was able to get right to the top 20, but the leader keeps advancing, and the pole sitter going a lap down to Denny Hamlin. It just shows how fast Denny's car is right now. I mean, this longer run, obviously, uh, you know, Denny's been able to go out there and, and put some good cars a lap down as he's uh, yeah. catching Chase Elliott here. But how about that good car that he's putting a lap down? That's a really good car. I mean, that, you know, I, unbelievable. Whoa. Now he's in yeah. the wall. Ran, ran out of racetrack there. Cannot beat yourself. Ryan Priest and that team, they show this. Trying so hard. So 113 laps to go. Hamlin 1.3 seconds ahead of Kevin Harvick and working heavy traffic. Ryan Blaney. 
unscheduled Larry. Mike it, it's definitely way shorter than what they can run. They could probably run another 40 or 50 laps. But I, what I'm seeing now we're, we're closing in on a second three quarter of a fall off. And I think if your car's handling bad it's only going to get worse. So maybe some of them are really starting to short pit. Yes here comes Alex Bowman who is also uh, short pitting as Larry says they can go the distance from here. And Ryan Priest was able to pass Chase Elliott and drive away from Denny Hamlin for a bit here. Uh, here's Wallace back alongside Hamlin who is inside of Haley. That's the preferred line. Now he's going to have to deal with Blaney just ahead. Big stack up here at turn three. And that's going to sort itself out. Christopher Bell last fall's winner here is in and so is Kyle Busch and Tyler Reddick. So this begins green flag stops Regan. Like the 45 and Tyler Reddick has been too loose in and a little bit tight in the middle throughout the day. Right now he's been managing a lot of that with the brake bias. They're going to give him four tires here. Kevin Harvick is in. And so is Haley. Jamie. And once Kevin Harvick gave up that lead he said we got really bad really quickly tight through the middle getting a little loose in so he's looking forward to these adjustments here on the four four tire stop and air pressure adjustment Regan. Eric Amaral in the 10 car after contact earlier with the 99 of Dennis Suarez was worried that that race car had something bent it was so loose to start this run it's come back to him though he's happier with it right now. But the leader Denny Hamlin he got caught up in a whole pile of cars that just exited the pits on fresh tires right in front of him. So he is coming to the pits Regan. Mike Denny's only complaint with that race car this run is it loses just a little bit of forward drive after 25 laps into the run. But I don't know that they need to worry too much about that. Seems like he's got way more than everybody else. And the five car Kyle Larson should be heading to the pits right now. That car has been getting better as the day goes on. They just can't connect the corner. If they get good in the middle they don't have drive off and otherwise they can't connect it. Briscoe Almarola Chastain have been on pit road. Here's Byron uh, Chase Elliott. And Gilliland in. So that's about half of our lead lap cars have been to pit road. AJ Allmendinger too fast exiting. He'll have to come back around and make a pass down pit road at pit road speed. Jamie. Great day for Todd Gilliland. Mike, you mentioned him. He's had top tens in the last two of the last three races this season. So they're certainly on the upward swing. Been running top ten all day today. They're happy with it. They said keep hitting your marks. Stay in the top 10. Quick stop for him. Ricky Stenhouse on pit road. So is Eric Jones and all Almendinger makes his uh, penalty drive down pit road. Going to take him off the lead lap today. Anthony Alfredo in the pits. So that will leave us the top six on the leaderboard plus eighth place Martin Truex 12th place Noah Gregson 14th place Harrison Burton and 16th place Corey LaJoy are the cars that have not yet stopped. I think as a driver when I saw those first guys pit as a driver I saw them, I would see them pit and I would want to like say hey listen do we need to do what they're doing you know because if they're going to come out and beat us on lap times you know short pit like pit like Larry said I mean as a driver that's what I want to do I want to say hey let's keep up with them. Absolutely. Well the big gainer so far has been Kevin Harvick on that green flag cycle because Harvick was seven tenths of a second behind Hamlin when he pitted from second and he is now in eighth place the first of the cars that have already made their green flag stop. Yeah, these guys are really thrashing to get around the leader Keselowski. Get their lap back. Such a nerve wracking time when you start at a green flag pit stops on these short tracks. Everybody bunched up everybody coming out on tires old tires that's when something can happen. Get into the back of somebody with your grip mismatched with your new tires versus their old. Now look on your left on the scoring pylon there is the number of laps since the pit stops as Kozlowski is now in that will turn the lead over to Daniel Suarez who along with Wallace Logano Dylan McDowell and Truex and Gregson have yet to stop. Logano sliding all over the place. Jamie. 
Yeah, Kozlowski's had a pretty solid day. Certainly much better than the way he ran in both races last year. Stayed out there, led seven laps. He said this full sun is playing into our hands. It's getting a little slick, and that means the car is better. Four tire stop, air pressure adjustment for the six. Anthony Alfredo in trouble in turn two. He came down the front stretch up against the wall, and look, there's why. Look at the tire against the wall on the front straightaway. Yeah, it's off of turn four. It should be a caution. I'm not sure why it's not. What did you say? Not sure where it's. I didn't see the tire. Is it in the pits? No, it's no. on the wall. It's up yeah, against there's the, the wall. Caution they right finally there. saw it. They it's against the wall it. in turn four. Yeah, you cannot see it from. Well, I, I, I'm saying I see that. I'm saying if from up here in the grandstands or even in the booth, even for NASCAR, somebody had to tell them. One of the teams are probably telling them you couldn't see it up against the wall. Well, that will be a suspension for a couple of crew members on the 78. Uh, there you see him in trouble coming off the corner and the wheel and tire exiting the car. Man, Brad just did pit. Mm. Logano staying out. Wallace, that's going to save their day. They're going to have to pit here. Ryan Blaney got a break. He gets the free pass, but the big winner is here. Suarez, Wallace, Logano, McDowell, Truex, and then Gregson and Burton had not stopped. Now, a number of drivers that just had will likely take the wave around and get back on the lead lap. But this is pretty much going to be a free stop uh, for those five lead lap cars that had not yet been to pit road. The ones with those numbers over 100 on your scoring pylon. Absolutely. Actually only shown 11 cars on lead lap right now. That's a caution you need. It was time to gamble for some of those guys. <laughs> Wallace, they were out. logano has been struggling all day long. Paid off for them. Wallace was looking for a caution. He was beating on his team owner. I guess he got it, you know, without having to <laughs> take somebody out or, or hit yeah, a PR. Absolutely. Huge, huge turnaround for them in their day. New life, new shot in the arm. Yeah. It's exactly what you needed. Joey Logano spent most of this race out of the top 25 after having to start in the back because they had a water leak this morning, changed a part. And NASCAR said, OK, you lose your starting position, you start in the rear. And now he's the fourth place car. Yeah. <laughs> Eric Jones, we're told, has been penalized. Uh, improper fueling on the 43. So Martin Truex up into the top 10 after he was mired down around 25th place for a while. Yeah, he was hanging out there and, and slipping and sliding. I mean, he got a lap down after several laps and, uh, you know, definitely looked like he needed a, you know, major chassis adjustment. So this is going to, you know, perk his day back up. So of the drivers that stopped under green, Kevin Harvick in the best place right now, third place. Denny Hamlin, who was leading on the green flag stops, now fifth. Regan? Mike, the 23 car and Bubba Wallace, they wanted to play the long game there. It worked out good for him. Bubba very happy with the team for doing that. He needs lateral grip with that race car. And the 22 of Joey Logano, another great break for them. He has been loose off and tight in the middle all day long, though that was the best run so far. Jamie? Kevin Harvick in once again just to put some new tires on there. The 99 of Daniel Suarez, terrible last run. He had that issue in the rear. Wasn't sure what it was. Made an air pressure adjustment for tires. So Suarez leads them off pit road. Bunch of drivers up ahead that did not stop. And there is the reason for the caution flag. Coming up next, USFL kickoff weekend continues. The Pittsburgh Maulers open their season against the New Orleans Breakers next year on FS1 and on the Fox Sports app. Yes, and Pittsburgh Maulers, they change the colors black. That way they should be yellow and black. Bobby, I'm all over the Maulers. That is an awesome name. 
has to be an awesome team. I kind of like the New Orleans Breakers. You're out. Well, you're on. How about that? You're on. <laughs> we are going to maul you. No. Yes. I'm going to break you. I say How's we that? as in I am. I'm, I took ownership into Pittsburgh. I like it. That's my team for the year. Oh. Well, I'm going to enjoy watching. You guys can maul and break each other all you want. He's broken. But it's spring football. It's on FS1. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a maul. A mauling. <laughs> all right. 12 cars <laughs> took the wave around uh, to start in the back. Uh, they had pitted under green. And once the leader came down pit road, they were the first cars behind the pace car. So they are back on the lead lap. 24 lead lap cars, including Ryan Blaney, the pre-pass car. Todd Gilliland has dropped a cylinder, we're told. Uh, just running on seven. That's going to spoil what's been a great day so far for him. But he's still on the lead lap and will restart 16. That's too bad. We were just talking about how good a job he's been doing. Had a good strong run going here. You know, back years ago, if you drop a cylinder, it might be okay. I'm interested to, to see Larson stayed out here and got some track position. If he can get that lead, maybe he can take advantage of it. Those three cars stayed out. Briscoe, Reddick, and Larson. Harvick still. I think he's going to be. What do they call him, Bobby? The closer. Oh. The closer. Might just be his day. Well, Briscoe, Harvard, Wallace, they all stopped under green prior to this caution flag for Alfredo. We're going to have 88 laps to go in Martinsville. Green flag. down there that's a really strong car Eric Almarola careful of them blocks pretty aggressive Kyle Larson trying to block both lanes at once as he tries to hold back Reddick and Harvick look at the difference Logano man it's changed his whole day got the track position he needed got to get clear of Wallace here you got Denny that was, you know, so fast. Now he's back there, mired back a little bit on the outside. Can't get, uh, can't get turned down, get in line. Kyle Larson, that's as high as a Hendrick car has been today. Second place. Came Watching right uh, Briscoe take off. Denny Hamlin to the outside makes a pass. Martin Truex. Teammates there. You look at Chase Briscoe. I mean, he's pulled away from uh, from Kyle Larson. I mean, that's, that's impressive, you know, just staying out there like that. And, uh, or not staying out there, but staying up there and just driving off. Of that Stuart Haas car is really fast. Three wide in the back, Christopher Bell. Uh, almost got caught in the middle of the sandwich there in turn number two and squeezed. A little bump and run there. Almondinger gets aggressive on the back bumper of Chastain. a mess back there. <laughs> they were throwing haymakers, beating and banging every corner. Now Michael McDowell is on the lead lap. The cars he's battling here are not Gregson and Dillon. And everybody gets a little impatient right there. Denny Hamlin in ninth. We listened in. Oh yeah, we're plowing now, baby. Patience, but stay under the tires. Long way to go. Track position. Plowing in that dirty air with those cars. Cannot believe I'm saying Outside that at Martinsville. Bumper. Yeah. Yeah. You just. Uh, Still there. Got to stay down here. You, you don't realize sometimes until you're up front how, how much track position really means for you. It's been that Outside way. Everybody. Priest. 
Keslowski with our fourth camera looking back at uh, Austin Dillon who is not on the lead lap or who is back on the lead lap excuse me in 22nd. Well tight front outside the nine bumper and bumper 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 still there then I lost the bottom of the three half back on the bottom you're good I'm good. Good rep battle there for 21st. Bumper bumper still there still there. One lap. One lap, Bobby, is all he needed. Missed that caution. He was on pit road. Talking about Keselowski there. Man. Yeah, if he would have stayed out, for sure. I mean, we talked about him earlier about, you know, being pretty competitive, being up there in the top ten and being pretty steady. And, you know, obviously, like we talked about over and over about being in, in traffic. We talked, we looked at it a while ago, and I think I looked at you, and you said, yeah, I hate to be back there. And I remember times we were back there, and it's like, man, it's such a struggle to try to get away from cars. Uh, you like to look up front and you want to be single file. You don't want to be having to race anybody. It's just Here a all. grind back every Outside single lap, beating and banging and dooring somebody, getting doored, slipping and sliding, can't get in a, gro a, a groove. You know, we talk about this racetrack and, you know, it's such a rhythmic racetrack. You have to find that rhythm. And when you do that, you just start putting them lap times down and the only way you can do that is to be up front like Chase Briscoe when you're back here in traffic like Austin Dillon right there you are in big trouble. Three wide. Plenty of room. <laughs> Door. Door. And there's no let up. Now, if you like white knuckle racing, next Sunday the NASCAR Cup Series returns to Fox as we head to Talladega. Catch all the action with the pre race kicking off at 2 Eastern and then engines fire for the Geico 500 at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Tony Stewart will join us on Fox next Sunday at the world's fastest speedway. Looking forward to that one. What a wild race that is. Never know what's going to happen there. Talladega is a sure is a fun time. Larry. Yeah, you see Chase Briscoe in his 14 car leading the race. Of course, they were one of the three cars that stayed out. That's how he got the lead. But honestly, that caution was a lucky break for that 14 car because before the green flag pit stop at lap 292, he was running third and we couldn't figure out how come he had such a slow stop. We went back and found the fact that the right rear lug nut completely fell off and the tire changer had to retrieve another lug nut and they had a very slow stop. He got way behind. So really a little bit of a lucky break for that 14 car. Wow, sure was. So 71 laps to go. Briscoe leads Kyle Larson by 1.7 seconds as we take you Fox side by side. A-list celebrities. They'll sing for their lives. But who are they? The Mass Singer is back. Oh no, why the long face? The new season is epic and you can watch anytime with weekly themes. New York night, 80s night, Alba night. And a new twist. Whoa. That will have everyone talking. What? Somebody's messing with us. All new Mask Singer, Wednesdays on Fox or watch anytime on Hulu. The roar returns to the Monster Mile where teams roar. Where the fans and the fan zone roar. Where champions roar. Where tailgates roar. Feel the roar. Be the roar. NASCAR roars at Dover Motor Speedway, home of the Monster Mile, April 28th through the 30th. Great seats, am I right? You got this, Carlos! Thanks, Advance. Like Advance. I'm the number one fan of Advance Auto Parts, and I am here for the free battery tests. Yes! 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 And free die-hard battery installations. Let's go! Or when they put on new wiper blades. In the rain! I see we have a new fan. Yeah, but I'm still number one, though, right? No, no, seriously, I I'm still number one? Still number one. You think it'll ever stop raining? This is how we advance. This is electric. Powered by Lexus.
the first ever all-electric RZ. Get all your breakfast faves like hash browns for just a few bucks, only on the McDonald's one, two, three dollar menu. It's Pod's biggest sale of the year. Save up to 30% on moving and storage until April 17th. And see why Pod's has been trusted with over 6 million moves nationwide. Save up to 30% now until April 17th. Visit Pod's.com today. 64 laps to go in Martinsville. Martin Truex Jr. has driven to Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane three times here. Who will make it today? Chase Briscoe with a two second lead on Kyle Larson. Tyler Reddick, another second back. This is the most laps Briscoe has ever led in a cup race when he won at Phoenix in March of last year. He led 101. He's been out front now for 102. That number's climbing. No pressure from Larson, two seconds back. Best battle on the racetrack, probably Reddick and Harvick. Uh, they're only a car length apart entering turn number three. Yeah, Harvick's definitely coming. This is a long run speed in him, and, and it'd be interesting to see if, if Denny Hamlin can come as well, but he just doesn't seem to be near as good as he was when he had better track position. Well, they got a few laps of tires and you know they're, they're definitely the hottest they're going to be slipping and sliding a little bit. And, and everybody's trying to find a little extra something and you know like you said earlier desperation time and and all that. But uh, yeah I don't know that uh, it's good to see Reddick get back up there at this position because uh, you know he's kind of been riding pretty quietly but you know, he's uh, put himself in the in the top three trying to hold him off. Saw a good bit of bump and thump during that uh, side by side break. Ryan Priest and Ross Chastain had uh, a discussion of bumper covers. Austin Dillon uh, got into the back of Ty Gibbs to move him to move up a spot. Drivers uh, around the top 15 to 18. A lot of movement here as we close in on 50 to go. Yeah, that's uh, goes back to that desperation, Mike. I mean, you know, was, you you, you got to make something happen, and uh, you try to get everything you can. Every point counts, and uh, yeah, makes it uh, you're going to get pushed up around. Oh, got one. What in the wall? That's yep. the 15. JJ Yaley in turn three it just just kind of went straight in. Yeah, something something had to happen. That'll be the fifth caution flag of the day at lap 344. for the blue car. Had the brakes locked up, but yeah, he did. I'm wondering if the right front tire was down. Well, no, you can see that it's up. Their brakes went something went haywire with the brakes. Something happened to that car, obviously. Window nets down. That's the signal to the AMR safety crew that uh, JJ's OK. Look at those skid marks. He had it all locked up. It just wouldn't slow. It's good to see that he's got the helmet off. But yeah, something had to happen. I'm sure it's a lot of uh, a lot of skid marks for a long way. Yeah, I mean it's. I don't know if lost rear brakes or something. Wrong. Obviously the. So Kyle Busch will get the free pass on this caution flag as uh, Yaley climbs out a little gingerly. Well, Larry, 56 laps to go. What do you want to do here? Well, Mike, I go back earlier in the uh, race when Ross Chastain had 40 laps on his tires and he stayed out. Right now, these guys have about 30 laps. We're going to go back racing without 50 to go. Honestly, I think you're going to see strategy all over the place right here. Larson and Reddick among the front runners and uh, have more t time or more laps on their tires than anybody else. But Logano, here they come. Almirola and Denny Hamlin all stay out. Regan. Like it was a very late call to bring Chase Briscoe to pit road. The pit call was code work by Hindra. It was set right as they were getting to the line. He barely made it down right there. It's going to be four tires for him. And the five car Kyle Larson is pretty good right now. He's just needing to get into his rhythm. Jamie. 
Again, a little discussion on the four radio. This is their last set of sticker tires going on that four right now. Daniel Torres on the right side, a little bit better, but not great after that last stop. So they wanted to pit again, make one more adjustment. Kyle Larson is gambling on two tires. Well, Larry called it. They're all over the place. Two tires staying out, four tires. Blaney up four positions on two tires. Game on. So we'll go side by side with 55 laps to go under caution. This week on Fox Saturday Baseball. Get on this level. Francisco Lindor and Pete Alonzo power the Mets against Brandon Crawford and the Giants. Or Randy Arozarena leads the Rays' historic start what a catch! as they take on Chicago's South Side White Sox. It all starts at 4 Eastern on Fox Saturday Baseball. Get on this level. Out here, you're more than just a landowner. You're a gardener, a landscaper, a hunter. Because you didn't settle for ordinary. Same goes for your equipment. Versatile, powerful, durable Kubota equipment. More goes into it, so you get more out of it. Oh, OK. Yes, it does it. We switched to Liberty Mutual and saved $652. They customize your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need. With the money we saved, we thought we'd try electric like unicycles. Careful, babe. Saving was definitely easier. Hey, babe, I think I got it. It's actually... Okay, show off. <laughs> Help! Oh. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. From the places that pull us to the passions that push us on the roads that unite us, Napa has America's largest network of parts and care, here to keep you firing on all cylinders. Chase is back. Back to the track. Back to doing what he does best. Going fast. Chase Elliott will pick up the lead. Back to the quest for glory. Chase Elliott has won. And sounding a siren in Dawsonville. Elliott is on the back bumper. The nine is back. Better get ready. What a drive. Coming up next, the USFL kickoff weekend. The Maulers against the Breakers. Next, right here on FS1 on the Fox Sports app. Who are you going to maul? Who are you going to break? I'm going to maul them. I'm going to break them. Well, somebody mauled Kevin Harvick's wheel. The wheel nut came off. And look at how that rim is separated. Uh, just like it had been cut on a lathe. Yeah, and that's exactly right. You could see when he was coming in, the lug nut was off of it. And I think actually that's the reason it stayed on there. I think the caliper cut that thing in half. You can see it. Obviously, there's no lug nut on there, but look at the shaving. See the aluminum shavings ripping off that thing? Now, the, the caliper or maybe the uh, some bolt got in there, held that wheel on there. Pretty lucky for them. Wow. Jamie. Yeah, and right away when Kevin Harvick left his pit box the first time he said I think we've got a loose wheel then the team told him no it looks flat and now Kevin thinks maybe something broke inside so he came in they put a right front on it but remember I said they had already put their last set of scuffs or sticker tires on there so they put their qualifying scuff on that right front so is the qualifying scuff the tire that went down Jamie no, no, that was the last sticker yeah. tire, okay. yeah, so thank they you. just replaced it with that qualifying scuff. Thanks for clarifying that. Sure. Terrible, terrible blow. Um, couldn't be any worse timing for that. Really no chance with 50 laps to go for a rebound. Just a, a bad luck thing. That is a product of exactly what you were saying earlier um, with, with uh, the, the loose wheel talk. The wheel gets caught. It tightens up. That changer thinks that right. it's tight, and it's it's not at all. It's not seated in the pins, yeah. and uh, does it get past the the stopper that will not let the the lug nut come off? Hmm. Well, NASCAR fans, here's one for free. Everybody loves free, right? NASCAR Fan Rewards, a free program where you can earn points for free race tickets, VIP experience, 
boxes and NASCAR merchandise. During today's race, members who check in on the leaderboard earn triple the usual points. Log in or sign up at NASCAR.com slash rewards. This is going to be so interesting. Inside 50 to go. I really like. See the lug nut probably going to fall off this four car. There it goes. You can yep. see it rolling across the track. Now Larry Mack and his producer Steve Shaw uh, found that for us. That footage. I like this 10 car. I like where he's at. Almirola has have been really fast. Obviously, he's got to make some quick time with Logano. Logano's struggled a little bit. Obviously, new life for him, um, taking advantage of that untimely pit stop. Took a little longer than usual to remove J.J. Yaley's car from the turn three wall. It is now being hauled away by one of the steps wreckers. And we should get back to green shortly. Full sun over the racetrack, as you, except for the uh, shaded portion of the straightaway, as you see from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. You know, we've talked about the Hail Melon, and we've shown it to you enough times that maybe you think you were here uh, last fall when it happened. But that was only the second greatest finish in Martinsville history. In the 1981 Spring Dogwood 500, up on the wall is Richie Evans, and I mean up on the wall, because he and Jeff Bodine in the 99 both refused to lose this race, battered and banged each other until coming off turn four. Bodine sent Evans to the wall, and he kept his foot in it. <laughs> I think only two tires were touching the ground when Richie Evans took the checkered flag. Up on the wall, a video game move, a slot car move, call it what you will, but that was the Hail Melon by Ross Chastain that put him into the history books 40 years later here. I know we, we show it a lot, but man, show me something more spectacular than that. <laughs> I, I honestly, just because it's, it's recent, That'll go down as one of the most memorable moments in this sports history. All right, wow. we're getting ready for the restart, and here's who stayed out. Joey Logano, who was sixth. Eric Almirola was eighth. Denny Hamlin was ninth. Ricky Stenhouse was 24th. Here's the Logano radio. So when the one stayed out earlier today, there he got the lead. It took 28 laps before he even got past. He had 10 more laps on his tires. Did you know how he was running at that point in the race? So forth. Now also Larson, Suarez, Blaney, Byron, and Austin Dillon just took two tires to move up in the running order. So here we go with 25 lead lap cars and 46 laps to go. Not a great start at all for Almirola on the outside. Didn't get a good jump. <laughs> Gives Danny a shot to move him up the racetrack here and get into second. Yeah, Larson elected to get down behind Danny because of that. Comes Briscoe too. Made pretty quick work to get right on the back bumper of those boys. I think if you're the guy with with used tires, you don't want to be on the outside. You no. try to hug that bottom and protect it. Got a little loose there. Amarone getting into the corner. He's holding strong. Has to be careful. Briscoe on those tires is able to get a two for one here. Exactly what he's looking for. A little contact between those teammates. Get down. Go ahead, your bumper, get down. And Al Marola couldn't hold the bottom. Here comes Briscoe again. Jamie? William Byron in 12th right now just came on the radio and said something's vibrating like we might be blowing up so the team is ready if he needs to pit. He's in a hornet's nest right there. Well, Logano certainly got the jump, got the track position that he needed and is driving away, but right before that caution came to green, Bobby looked at me and held up two fingers, said that 11 car. 
He's there, but I'm telling you, Larson is there. Going to make a pass on him. Two tires for Larson. 41 to go. You know, the track's maybe a little bit different now than it was earlier when those guys got two tires and, you know, took a gamble or stayed out. Uh, so maybe staying out might not have been the right thing to do this way. But here's what happens when you leave the track early or let's say you go away from the TV for a while and come back. Joey Logano's average running position today is 23rd. Other than the timing of this caution, there's no way he would be up here challenging for this win. Yet, here he is. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. We saw him go a lap down, and we saw, you know, just never could get out of his, you know, out from the back back there. But fresh air and clean, uh, clean racetrack, man, really changed his day. Larson, about a tenth faster here. Logano, he's coming. Briscoe is as well. Briscoe needs to make quick time of Denny. Denny's, for whatever reason, just had not have the car here late in the race. Hamlin's the only Toyota in the top eight. Truex just gave Reddick a boot to move up to 10th behind Bubba Wallace. Another 10th off the leader. That lap as well. Pretty much on him. Ford Chevy Toyota, one, two, three. With Fords filling three of the top five spots. 37 to go. Austin Dillon gets a little aggressive with Reddick as well, and the 48 of Bowman's going to follow him through, perhaps. Yeah, Reddick's not having a good time right now. He's definitely falling back, stuck on that outside. It's going to be important for Kyle. To use this momentum, use the tires early. You're only on two tires. Get by him, pounce on this, and go. He's going to try to cross over here. Not quite yet. You get stalled out. You start using your car up, abusing the tires more and more. I think he needs to try to get this done as fast as possible. Yeah, you know, the, the two tires, you know, obviously showing off, showing the. Uh, He's got good pace with it, but you know, still got a lot of laps left. And you never know when it might fall off. You know, I mean, it gets to a point where it's like, okay, I've lost all grip. So uh, I'm, I'm with you. He's got to, he's got to get, get past Joey, and uh, you know, try to maintain that lead. But if you don't, the more you wear out your tires trying to get past him, somebody, you know, the guys behind him are going to catch back up. You're going to lose a little time. Might see it right here. Here he comes. Great crossover, but he got to his bumper at the wrong place. Gonna push early, push early, push early, push early. Tight, make hold, you're clear. 1984. Rick Hendricks' fledgling NASCAR team was all but out of business. Crew Chief Harry Hyde said, the car's ready for Martinsville. The boys want to go. We don't want to close up shop. There he is. We want to come here. And they won that race with Jeff Bodine in car number five, which launched Hendrick Motorsports on its eventual run to be the most successful team in NASCAR. So here is car number five, Kyle Larson taking the lead. Wow, just did not see this out of the five car. He was solid all day long, but man, they capitalized on that off sequence, pit, uh, off sequence pit stop. Here he is racing for the lead, 30 laps to go. And he's been, out, been able to outbreak Joey going in, but you know, can't quite get the pass. I mean, Joey's able to hold on the outside, just like he just keeps pulling back up to him. Can't, can't make it clear, and he's got a clearing. Well, he moved him up the last corner. There he's moving him up again. He's going to get it cleared up off yeah. the corner. Now you got to run and hide. <laughs> Good point. You don't want to let Logano back to your bumper. There he is. Yep. That might have been it right there. Got him on her feet now. People like it. Yeah. Race is on. A lot of blue in that section of the grandstand. Now that has allowed Denny Hamlin to close within 1.2 seconds ahead of Briscoe and Almirola. 
It's such a good feeling if you're Larson. Obviously, two tires, 27 laps to go. You heard his spotter tell him that. Now just settle in, manage that gap. If there's a caution or something, you're going to need all the tire you can get. Some of these guys will have four tires. Excuse me, uh, you know, Briscoe, Almirola, those guys will be strong if there's a restart. Battle on the left of your screen, sixth place, Ricky Stenhouse. Ending up with a great day here, but Martin Truex has been on the charge since the restart and takes over sixth place. Yeah, that's a good run for Ricky. I mean, you know, he's out there. He's, he doesn't have a doesn't look like he's a, doesn't have a tire mark on it. So, uh, Ricky? It's, yeah, looks like it. Okay. <laughs> wow. Kyle Larson was runner up here last fall. Does not have a grandfather clock in his collection. Yeah, I was talking to him this week and he just said he struggles here a little bit. Uh, not one of his favorite racetracks and that all might change here. 24 laps. His this teammate, be a big one for him. He'll his, be excited as excited as he gets. <laughs> His teammate Chase Elliott is one of the fastest cars on the racetrack, along with Martin Truex. Uh, Elliott back in 13th. First race back for Chase Elliott after uh, breaking his leg in a snowboarding accident. There's the Hendrick dominance here. This has been probably the best and worst racetrack for Rick Hendrick in his time in the NASCAR Cup Series. Here's Regan. Mike, interesting side note on that five car. You guys mentioned that his best finish was second last time that we came here. This is a completely different setup, though. Cliff Daniels, crew chief, told me we wanted to try something different. We were always good on the front ends of runs. We wanted to see if we could make our race car better on the back side of a run if we have long runs. They tried that for today. It looks like it's playing out right now. Unbelievable how this race has changed. We haven't talked about him all day long, but Truex here passing for fifth. Unbelievable. Quarter buffer. Showing up when the time's right. Yeah. Yeah, Clint. Yeah, he set him up down there in one and two and just made a made a pass off him off of turn two like, uh, you know, like like Eric really, really didn't have a chance to even try to block him or, or hold that spot. He's so quick off that corner back. Oh, uh, Truex has been the best car here since the restart. I'm very impressed with Logano. Uh, again, another car that's just completely changed their day for the better, taking advantage of some strategy and some situations that's happened with cautions and holding his own. I mean, there's a lot of laps. He last pitted on lap 306 uh, with 19 to go here. I mean, you're not going to, you might lose one or two, but it's not just going to fall off of a cliff and go back to where you were. Huge turnaround for them. They're going to be happy about that. Caution could change that. <laughs> 11th place, Alex Bowman, Chase Elliott. Uh, Elliott in the last 20 laps has picked up about four positions here. He's one of the faster cars on the racetrack. I was watching a video clip earlier today from the 1980s, and you had Richard Petty, Darrell Walter, Bobby Allis, and others talking about would you rather be lucky or good? And, and of course, Darrell wanted both sides of the equation. Well, I want to be good, but, you know, I'll take lucky any day. Joey Logano has made his own racing luck. Uh, fought him's way down to second place, first on the restart, but for a car whose average running position today until the last 20 laps was 23rd. That is, that's by far the biggest turnaround of the day. Knowing what I know now, I would be, I would want to be lucky. Yes. You know, because I mean, you could be, everybody's, everybody's good. Uh, if you had a little bad luck, if you get your luck back, I think you're going to be pretty strong. Martin Truex making his own luck, racing Chase Briscoe for fourth now. Truex is flying. Corner, bumper, clear, stretching. He probably has enough time to battle Logano for second before this is over 15 laps from now. I don't think you're dead on with that. And then a caution, if something catches a caution, <laughs> might just be just what the doctor ordered. There you saw Larson go, and here comes Logano. He's gone. Slogging laps, 13 to go. 
Right there in the hole he's in, that's kind of where I want to ride. Manage that. I don't want to get up there. You got three wide beating and banging up ahead of you. I don't want any part of that. Larson and Truex, fastest cars on the racetrack right now. Closer you get to those guys, too. You know, you talk about managing this situation, the lead, they're not catching you. And the closer you get to, to the lappers, they start racing harder and ratcheting up their tension. They start beating and banging on each other. You do not want to caution. Clint, did Kyle give any indication why he doesn't like this place, or did he just feel the track doesn't like him and his style of driving? Of course he did. He's a race car driver. He had <laughs> one here yet. Oh, okay. Of course, if you talk to Kyle, you know, it's, well, I just suck there. You know, and it's like, <laughs> oh, really? You think that's the problem? <laughs> just haven't figured out the, the combination yet. Yeah. I think they're on it here. Boy, Martin Truex has. He is all over Denny Hamlin now for third place with 10 to go. Yeah. And this battle will probably keep him from getting to Logano. See which of these Toyotas prevails for third place. Yeah, Kyle really pulled out to that lead over Logano. You know, like you said, he needed to make that move, and he did. And he got past him. And, uh, you know, if he doesn't have a, if the caution doesn't come out, he should be safe to say that he'll be, you know, good to go. Jamie? Well, it's been interesting watching Martin Truex Jr. They came in pretty optimistic. Remember, he won at the Coliseum, and it has similar principles, so they thought they were going to be good. They have been extremely loose all day. They finally hit on something on that last stop with air pressure. Remember, he has the four tires. He's going forward, guys, and it's hard to believe, Mike, he hasn't finished in the top five yet this year. Wow. Perhaps he end, uh, ends that now. Now, Bobby, you ran the Smart uh, Modified Tour last night at Hickory. Do you guys run by the three-tap rule? Because Martin's already given him one tap to say I'm here. The second tap is move over, and you know what the third one is. Yeah, yeah I don't think we, we don't do that. <laughs> I mean, we we do that, and we but we might do it in two two taps, okay. and you're already out, out of the group. So. Well, he tapped around the 11, tap dance. Unbelievable. Man, just looking, you know, down the list here, Logano. I mean, we're talking an average running position today of... 21st, 22nd, and second place. Truex, you just see, passing for uh, for third place there. It's like an average running position of 18th. We're running third now. And the other one I want to point out, Stenhouse Jr., running seventh. He was, again, another guy that's averaged around 19th place all day long, overachieving when the time's right, taking advantage of this these pit cycles and things like that strategy. Now we saw Chase Elliott move up into the top 10 as Kyle Larson negotiates some traffic. Larry, is there a trend left we haven't hit on? Well, there may be, Mike. We've had eight Martinsville overtime finishes, including this race one year ago. And let me remind you, in eight races this year, half of them, four, went to overtime. Okay. <laughs> four to go. Well, if you watch the first 300 laps of this race, you'd say this finish is totally unexpected. Larson, Logano, Truex, one, two, three. Yeah, I sure didn't see this. This, uh, you know, what we saw early on with the uh, Ryan Priest out there leading all those laps. And, and, the then, and then Chase Briscoe, and then Denny Hamlin. Yeah, all very strong today. Just well, let's face it, it, it wasn't necessarily done on the racetrack. It was done in the pit area strategy and things like that. Just the way the cards fell. It ain't over. Just like Larry said, this boy's in it. Now I'm in a hurry if I'm Kyle Larson. I'm trying to get around to that white flag as <laughs> fast as I possibly can to make this race official. All right, Larson rounds off turn number four. White flag, one lap to go. Sponsored by Credit One Bank. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Bobby. <laughs> Truex is all over Logano for second. One last ditch effort here in three and four. What a comeback. Kyle Larson continues the Hendrick dominance at Martinsville. I don't even know what to say. I never thought I'd look here. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> mm. Great pit stop, great execution, great strategy. Great job all around, guys. Joey Logano held off Martin Truex by a car length for second. 
This is Larson's 21st career win in the NASCAR Cup Series, tying him for 38th all time with Jeff Burton, Benny Parsons, Jack Smith, and Bobby Labonte. Nice. Good tie. I think he's going to win more of them after this than I did. I am. Took him 17 races to get to victory lane to Martinsville. Be careful doing these burnouts these days. Might end up on fire. Yeah. He's going to be, this boy's going to be pumped up. Yeah, last night in the Xfinity race, John Hunter Nemechek won the race and then burned his car down with his burnouts. Everything caught fire. Nemechek hopped out and instead of talking about his race, told everybody about the fire extinguisher company uh, that was sponsoring his car last night. Good thing. Hats off to Rick, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and his team. Eighth place, another top 10 finish for them. Bubba Wallace, after all the struggles, pit road speeding penalty, uh, lows and spots on pit road, top 10. And Chase Elliott comes back from a broken leg, a top 10, just what the doctor ordered. Logano, unbelievable turnaround for him, second place. Yeah, great day for Hendrick Motorsports, obviously. Uh, not all their cars in the top five or top 10. We've seen that. Uh, throughout the year, but for Chase, I think that's great. And I, like you said, for Kyle, I think this is like probably at this point in time, I'm his favorite win. I think, did he just do a burnout all the way around the racetrack? Yes, yep. he did. <laughs> 28th Martinsville win for Hendrick Motorsports. Most all time of all teams, nine different drivers. They've won four of the last six, and their winning numbers are better than one in every three races they've entered here. That's impressive. Not too shabby. Not the days, not the finish that Stuart Haas wanted. I want to go back. We, we talked about them earlier in the show. They showed speed. Ryan Priest, again, another frustrating ending. Got to clean these mistakes up, and I think you might see that boy in victory lane. But for Stuart Haas, Priest won the pole, led the most laps, and Stuart Haas finished second, fifth, and sixth with Logano, Briscoe, and Almirola. Clint, I'll bet he likes this place now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this this is changes your whole thought <laughs> process on a, on a racetrack, doesn't it, Bobby? Yeah, for sure. I'm sure uh, when you see him at Millbridge on Tuesday night, he'll be smiling. Jamie Little. Kyle Larson with that masterful burnout around the entire racetrack. And Kyle, we know you've said it many times. This is not your favorite track. It's been tough for you. That two tire call, though, how were you able to capitalize on that strategy call and change things and get the win here? Yeah, just uh, huge congratulations to this whole five team and Hendrick Motorsports. Um, I feel like Cliff and everybody did a great job all day on pit road, making the right calls, having great pit stops. Uh, and then it all kind of worked out for me there at the end. We had a great car. That was the best my car had been, I think, you know, being able to get out front and manage. But, uh, yeah, I never, ever would have thought that I would won here at Martinsville. This place has been so tough on me. Um, just does not suit my driving style at all. Uh, I like to charge the center. I like to roll momentum. And uh, that's just not what this place is, is like. But thanks to Cliff Daniels and everybody for for making me feel like I know what I'm doing sometimes around here. So I uh, just can't believe it. Uh, glad my family's here too, Caitlin and the kids. I'm sure they're trying to get down here to the infield, but um, this is amazing. I, I, have, I honestly have never thought that I would win here, so I don't have a spot picked out either for the clock. So I'm gonna have to uh, make some space for sure. It's such a storied racetrack. It's been in the series since NASCAR began. And it means a lot to Hendrick Motorsports. And you've heard about the clock, all of those things considered. What does this mean to Kyle Larson? Yeah, it means a lot to me, but but I think more importantly, it, it means a lot to the whole Hendrick family and, and Hendrick Motorsports family. Um, you know, everybody knows what happened here so long ago, and uh, I think everybody, you know, that's on everybody's minds every time they come to Martinsville. So, uh, wish Rick was here, Linda, but uh, we got Jeff Gordon here, and, and I'm sure I'm sure Rick's probably on hold with Jeff Andrews or something waiting to talk to me. So, um, just. Gosh, again, thanks to everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. You guys are the best and uh, make make me, I can't believe it. I, I just, I can't believe that I won at Martinsville. Well, your team is waiting for you to celebrate. Congratulations, Kyle Larson wins at Martinsville.
of the day for Joey Logano. You start the race in the back, you go a uh, lap down at one point, didn't like the handling for a good portion of the day. Somehow this 22 ends up second though. Yes, uh, solid, I mean, recovery <laughs> for, for what the start of the race looked like. We went down a lap twice, uh, two times, and at one point in the race, I'd have been just happy to finish on a lead lap. Uh, and, and Paul did a good job of getting some good changes to the Verizon Mustang to where it got competitive. We just needed a track position. Uh, was able to stay out, get a lucky caution there during the green flag cycle. Stayed out again uh, when everyone pitted and put us on the front row and a, and a shot to win the race. Uh, I tried holding off Larson as, as long as I could, but uh, overall, there's days when you're mad about second. Today's not one of those. Today's when you're pretty stoked that you finished uh, a little better than I thought we were going to. What was it that you needed more of out of this race car? I know that you had to start in the back, but it just seemed like it never really woke up for you. Yeah, we're just going to get the car to rotate through the center of the corner. I was just so slow right in the center, and I couldn't make any passes for that reason, so I was trapped back there. And once we made a, there was one change that like woke it up a little bit, and it's like, all right, I'm decent now, but I'm trapped back here. It's really hard to pass. Um, so, like I said, Paul was able to give me what I needed to, to get towards the front and then, you know, fight hard with Larson. I didn't have a fighting chance there. <laughs> he drove away from me so quick, but he was pretty patient. I knew I was going to get bumped. That was the only way he was going to go by me was he's going to have to get physical and uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, it was fun. And like I said, overall, it feels like a win considering how the day went so far. Thanks, Joey. Kyle Larson asking, answering questions after an impressive win here at Martinsville. So how was Chase Elliott's return? How did it go ending up with a top 10 finish? We'll ask him when we come back to Martinsville Speedway where Kyle Larson has won the NOCO 400. Kyle Larson and his team are joined by Jeff Gordon in Ruoff Mortgage Victory Lane, where the grandfather clock awaits today's winner. So how did Chase Elliott's day go? Here's Regan. Well, Mike, that's right, Chase Elliott returns after six weeks off. First, Chase, got to ask about the leg. This is a tough racetrack on a breaking racetrack. How did the leg hold up today? Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty good, honestly. I, it was about about what I expected, so that was a good thing. Um, just, uh, it was it was warm, and I've been sitting on the couch for six weeks, so I think that <laughs> that probably hurt me more than anything. But, you know, our Napa Chevy was, uh, we, we struggled really bad, honestly, for the first, every run but the last one. So um, we finally got it going there at the end, and I was able to make some passes and do things that I didn't think I, you know, I didn't really think I was gonna be capable of doing. Uh, or at least of us fixing it to that degree here at the racetrack. So I was pleasantly surprised by that. And uh, yeah, got us a top 10 out of our first day back. So that was definitely nothing to be too bummed out about. Certainly a nice battle by your team to get that car to where you could get to the top 10 today. What is the one thing you've missed the most about being at the racetrack over the past six weeks? Well, I think the people, honestly. I mean, uh oh, sorry. Uh, I think the people, really. I mean, from my peers to my teammates to you know, just uh, that competitive nature of being here and wanting to be better. So really nice to be back and uh, appreciate the warm welcome uh, this weekend by everybody. So I, I appreciate that and definitely didn't go unnoticed. So hope everybody enjoys their uh, the rest of their Sunday. Glad to have you back, Chase. Chase, Jamie. Martin Truex Jr. with his first top five of the season. And man, you guys took four tires. You were on fire there for a while. It went a little bit longer. Did you have anything for the two ahead of you? Yeah, I really don't know, honestly, Jamie. We, um, we had a Kind of a crazy day with our best pro shops, uh, Toyota Camry TRD, but really just um, you got a little bit lucky there getting back on the lead lap mid-race and just kept working on our car. We were just so loose all day long, and then finally at the end we got it a whole lot better. So uh, it was fun at the end passing a lot of cars and getting up there, but um, still needed to, needed to be a little bit better. But uh, overall, you know, proud of everybody for sticking with it and, and just grinding one out today. All right, Martin Truex Jr. brings it home third. Mike? Thanks, Jamie. Well, what a day in Martinsville. Ryan Priest starts on pole, leads a third of the race. Nobody else led a lap. Chase Briscoe leads over 100 laps. Denny Hamlin then looked like a sure winner. Things kept changing, and then the timing of the caution, well, changed everything. It absolutely did. It 
180, flipped the whole race over Logano. I mean, down and out all day long, ends up second place. Um, guys like Ricky Stenhouse Jr. with a top 10. Chase Elliott just heard him say, was it really the prettiest day? But, it was, you know, when it counted and when a pay window opened, um, they were there. But uh, Kyle Larson, <laughs> to be able to capitalize on that situation as well and win this race, get this one off the uh, checked off his list is uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, it's a tale of two races for sure. If you took a break and come back, you saw something different. You weren't sure what year you were in. But, you know, you think about Kyle Larson and what he talked about. He said this is like the, not the place he would have thought because he overcharges a corner. He wants to drive in there like a dirt late model, you know, so uh, a tough place for him. So I, I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to take a bet that I think this is one of his most special wins that he's had because it's a tough racetrack for him. And the track changed a lot during the day. We started out with a cloudy day. At times it was half and a half, and, and we ended up in full sun, but we didn't get a lot of caution flags to make changes to these cars. None. At the end of the day, the race was won in, in the pits. Um, the fastest car didn't win the race. Strategy and everything that plays out on a race like this when there's long green flag pit stops, that's what, that's where the juice was squeezed today. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's the way it is. But how about old Bobby? I had a lot of fun with you, Bobby. Uh, been a big fan, champion. It's always cool to have champions up here, and appreciate your help. Well, thank you, Clint. I uh, hope I didn't talk too much or talk not enough. You kept me for one stage last year. I made it three. So that's good. At least I made a cut. Got it to the end of the day. Great job thank by you. two former Martinsville winners. Thank you both. Coming up next on FS1, USFL kickoff weekend continues. Pittsburgh versus New Orleans. That's next right here on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. We're going to pack up our tools and head for the fastest speedway on earth, Talladega, Alabama, next Sunday on Fox. We'll go back to the Charlotte studio right after this, where Kyle Larson has won the NOCO 400. I traveled up the coast. I love my hometown with the Earlier this week, Kyle Larson was named one of the 75 greatest drivers in NASCAR. Today, he etches his name in the record book as a winner at Martinsville Speedway, adding to Hendrick Motorsports' already impressive list of wins, 28 total at the racetrack, 21st career win for Kyle Larson, second this season, and of course, as I just mentioned, his first at Martinsville. Shannon, Larry, and Jamie, I think he's just as surprised as anybody else how the end of this race went down, said he never thought he'd win at this racetrack. But ever since he stepped in that five car, they've had good speed at Martinsville, Virginia, but I don't think he expected to win this race today, but Clint Boyer pretty much said it there before they went off the air. This was not one with a fast race car. I mean, he had a good race car, don't get me wrong, but it was one with a call that Cliff Daniels made with going, coming there and getting two right side tires with 30 laps on their tires. That was the difference maker right there. Yeah, I've got to be honest. I was teammates with Larson for a long time. He hated coming to Martinsville. Just dreaded coming here. He typically would qualify well, but could never race well. And, you know, the mental side of racing is a huge, huge part of it. And when you don't believe, it, it's hard to produce. But... Larry said it since he's been in the five car. It's been a different Kyle Larson at this track. You mentioned that they have 28 wins here um, and their car did get better. And when we heard the interview with, with Truex, he talked about how his car got better at the end. Chase Elliott said his car got better yeah. at the end and the five did as well. So I think the racetrack changed and it benefited some hurt others. All right. Stick with us for our post race coverage because we've listened to or heard from the top three finishers. We're going to try to work through some of the top 10. We're going to get to Denny Hamlin right now. He finished fourth and he's with Regan Smith. Well, Denny Hamlin comes home in fourth place today. I don't know that that tells the whole story, Denny. It looked like this 11 car was really dominant there towards the middle to late stage of the race. What more did you need that last run? Just to stay in the lead. That, that, that was the biggest thing. Just like Richmond, um, when we drive the lead, it's you got to stay there. And we just uh, had unfortunate timing of that green flag pit cycle. And then um, we, we pitted, which put us towards the end of those lead lap cars. And... Cars I just was lapping 10 laps before that couldn't <laughs> couldn't pass them. So it's just this is next gen racing with these tires and this aero package. You just uh, there's no passing. Obviously, we saw 41, uh, you know, dominate the race. And once he got caught in the back, it was it. Uh, it's just what we got now. Thanks, Danny.
Well, we had nine different leaders out there today. Denny was one of them, led for 36 laps. And, and I know that strategy on pit road was key, especially with the, that final pit stop. But also, as he just mentioned, track position was so critical today. Well, but they elected to stay out on that last caution, just like Joe Logano, Ricky mm -hmm. Stenhouse Jr., Eric Almirola. But I think that what Denny's takeaway has to be from this race today, he and Martin Trex Jr. both, that's their first top five yeah. finish of 2023. So it's the little battles you kind of have to hang your hat on. I like that he kind of called his shot. We talked about this yes, as we were we watching did. the race when, when he's leading. We're like, he said he was going to get white hot uh, starting this weekend yeah. at Martinsville, and he slowly worked his way to the front, got the lead. It didn't work out for him in the end, but this could be the start of something good. He has some really good tracks coming up for Denny Hamlin. Surprised that Bubba Wallace was so aggressive with him on the track. Well, they were kind of aggressive <laughs> with each other. You know, it, there was, it, was, it seemed to be all take and no give between owner and driver right there. You know, Bubba trying to stay on the lead lap, and there was a lot of things. We we only were able to document a few things that happened between those two leading up to what you saw actually on the broadcast. Yeah, see, Larry sits in his little room and uh, he sees everything. <laughs> He's like the great Oz. Uh, let's head back out to the track. Jamie Littles with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. brings it home eighth, second straight top 10 in a row. And it was interesting during the race, we had full sun and full clouds. How much did that affect the car and the handling? Yeah, it changed a lot. Our treetop Kroger Camaro was uh, pretty solid all weekend. Um, we qualified better than we normally do and uh, kind of hung around the you know 13th, 14th area for a while. And then that long green flag run started happening, you know, green flag pit stops and uh, we kind of caught the wrong side of that caution and ended up in the back and um, you know, it didn't feel very good at all and the caution came out Mike Kelly told me to stay out last minute uh, so the guys back at the war room and, and Mike they were all talking all of our engineers and they felt like that was the best um, you know strategy for us to get the best possible finish and uh, and it was definitely worked out so I was uh, questioning it uh, I was like man Mike that was the worst it handled all day uh, and he goes everybody said that that you know was that far back so Restarted up front and uh, was able to, you know, bring my lap times back down and uh, hang on to a top 10. So it was really good to uh, get a second top 10 in a row and uh, go on to Talladega. Listen, we know that he started the season winning the Daytona 500 and ultimately kind of maybe locked his way into the playoffs, but we've seen a lot of consistency out of that race team. It, uh, it's been a pretty good surprise. I didn't really expect this team to run this well at so many different type tracks. Martinsville, kind of like for Kyle Larson, has not been a, a great track for Ricky Sanders Jr., but three of the last four races in the top ten, he mentioned that we're going to Talladega next yeah, weekend. We know after winning the 500 and the fact that he's won there in the past that they're going to be strong next weekend. It just seems like he and Mike Kelly, they're, they're just clicking together right now. You know, they have a history together back in the Xfinity Series, and it looks like this is exactly what Ricky and that 4017 needed because they're actually running inside the top 10 at a lot of variety of racetracks. It's not just one type of track. You know who else came up and had a great day were the Stuart Haas racing guys, right? We saw them running in, you know, in the top 10. Obviously, Kevin Harvick yeah, had his issues. Yeah, it was a really great day for them. Let's check in with one of those. Eric Amarola really needed a shot in the arm. He's with Regan Smith. A well, strong run all day long for Eric, Eric Amarola. Ends up sixth. I don't know that that tells the whole story of your day, though. No, it certainly doesn't. Um, gosh, we had such a fast Smithfield Ford Mustang. At times, I thought we were absolutely hands down the best race car on the racetrack. And at times, I thought we were a fourth or fifth place car. The middle part of the race, the track changed a lot. And Drew made a great adjustment to our car. We drove from eighth or ninth back to third. And during that green flag, pit cycle I, I came out third behind Denny and, and Harvick kind of leapfrogged us on short pitting us and I thought the race was going to be between me and Denny I thought we were capable of running Kevin down we had done it previously in that run before so 100 laps to go I was like man we're we're right where we need to be I'm going to race Denny here and we'll catch Harvick and it'll be a race between the three of us for the win and then the caution comes out and lets all those guys that we had a lap down cycle in front of us and put tires on it's just so hard to pass especially the cars are so equal, and through the race, everybody makes adjustments to their cars to make them better, and you just end up running so close to the same lap time, it's hard, hard to pass. So, great day to uh, to rebound after the year we've had. Just the start has been terrible, so um, great way to, to get it turned around and hopefully move forward from here and start getting points, and if we race up front like that enough, we'll, uh, we'll find ourselves with a chance to win. Thanks, Eric. Chase Briscoe leads 109 laps, brings it home fifth. Seemed like you guys are pretty darn racy. What's your takeaway with this new less down horse, uh, horsepower package and how it raced today overall? Yeah, you know, I thought I thought from, <coughs> sorry, I thought in the driver's seat, we were definitely slipping, sliding around a little bit more. You know, it still was 
definitely a struggle. I felt like to pass and clean air was just really, really important. But yeah, I thought inside the car we were you know, slipping, sliding around. You know, it was maybe 10% better than what we had. Still, I think we have a long way to go. But yeah, you know, for us, we had a, a really you know solid day, leading over 100 laps, and thought we were going to be in the best position there, leading there at the end. And just uh, that last caution, you know, being in the lead, and especially here, I feel like there's no like true definitive decision. Like the tires kind of hang on better than you think, and. Yeah, we decided to pit, and obviously Monday morning quarterback, it's a little bit easier to say we probably should have stayed out. But, you know, we went and lose this team. We had a really fast high-point.com forward, and, you know, that's something that we probably couldn't have said a month ago. We would have been killing to have speed. We have speed, just need to uh, capitalize on it. So, yeah, looking forward to uh, next week. I get surgery 5 a.m. in the morning. Hopefully they do a good job, and hopefully be back next week. That's what I was going to ask you. How was the finger? How's it feeling at this point? Yeah, with how we've been running, I might need to break another one. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's like that's been the turning point for us. So, yeah, you know, it was fine today. There was a couple times. I found myself, you know, just like I said last week, it's so bulky compared to what I'm used to. It's kind of hard uh, when I get in certain positions. But, yeah, it was overall good. You know, I think next week will probably be the easiest week for us so far. So, yeah, just curious to see what it'll be like, you know, with pins in and things like that. And kind of, I'm sure I'm going to have to do some things different. But, yeah, it was all good. You know, we've been able to, to lead laps with it. So, yeah, just uh, go on to next week and hopefully be recovered back to 100%. Yeah, thank you. Wow. Well, it was a dominant start to the day for Ryan Priest, and unfortunately, Ryan, the pit road speed and penalty, you were able to recover to 15th, but how tough was it once you lost that track position? Yeah, um, really tough. Uh, I think the only way any of those guys that, that got up there was, was really lucky getting a caution or pit strategy. So um, <clears throat> ultimately, we shouldn't have been in that position, shouldn't have sped on pit road, they're leaving, and uh, that put us in it. So, but. The bright side was we did win a stage, we led laps, we know we're capable of it, so we just got to uh, just got to keep digging. Thanks, Ryan. If you don't believe in Big Mo, then you just take a look at that guy right there, because of course we saw him just with a great run two weeks ago, goes out and sits on the pole today. Obviously, the pit road speeding penalty was what did him in. Yeah, in Stuart Haas Racing, though, we, we saw what they did in qualifying yesterday, and they led 264 of 400 laps. Ryan Priest led the first 135 laps of this race. That second caution, he gets that pit road speeding penalty, and we pretty much saw it. Unless you were one of those drivers that hadn't made that green flag pit stop and was able to, to maybe stay on the lead lap or take the wave around, even having a pit road speeding penalty before the halfway point, it was just too much and too hard to overcome. Yeah, I felt bad for Priest in that interview. You can tell he almost like he wanted to cry right there because he knew that he had a car that was it's probably like bummer, capable right? of, of winning yeah. the race and he'll go home tonight and not sleep but but he mentioned that they had speed and it's so interesting to me when we when we go to the tracks now that if one car is fast it seems like that whole organization is and we saw that with Stuart Haas in qualifying that translated into the race um, but I want to talk a little bit about Eric Almirola because he's on race up with us weekly or a couple you know a couple times a month and and we talked about his luck and the lack of luck and I like that he came on and he's like look I have a big believer that you make your own luck but some of the things that has happened to the 10 car, like blowing the tire leading at Atlanta, yeah. you don't make that luck. That's just, that's that's one of those things that happens. So it's great to see him, uh, you know, get a good run, be able to put it all together. We talked about that during the race. I hope they can finish this off. And I thought it was fun to see him have a little pep in his step, yeah. talking about that maybe they had a shot of winning. Yeah, I can't remember I the last time. I'd have to think long and hard to remember a race weekend where all four Stuart Haas racing cars were that solid, that consistent, and that strong. Yeah, Chase Briscoe, you got to give him an attaboy, right? He's racing with that broken finger. He just mentioned that he's going to have surgery at 5 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. It's just, it was a great day for all of those race cars, as you as you mentioned. It was, and of course, that's back-to-back -to -back top five finishes. Got the top five at the Bristol Dirt, and, and he said it there. I'm, I'm sure Johnny Klossmeyer will continue to rerun that last caution that came out when they made the stop for four tires. It looks like they were going to make a run, but then it just kind of leveled out, and all they could get back to was fifth. All right, ninth place finish for Bubba Wallace out there, who is with Regan Smith. Well, Bubba Wallace finds himself in ninth place today. Bubba, you guys got the pit strategy really good there towards the end. I know you had the pit penalty early on in the race, but a nice recovery from that. Yeah, for sure. Engineer and I just walked down to figure out where the lax section was, and I'm 95% sure I was good. Obviously, I was speeding, but I was like, there's no way. But uh, anyways, good to just stay in it mentally for myself and, and the team and pull that strategy there. And I called that tire sitting in the restart zone for three laps. I'm like, hello. Call it. This is our chance, and, and we we capitalized. But uh, all in all, just a, an okay day. Um, we're just missing something. You know, this is one of my favorite tracks, and we come here to run sixth to ninth every time. So we need to be better. But all in all, proud of our uh, McDonald's Toyota Camry group. Just have to keep on digging. Thanks, Bubba. Thank you.
Yeah, I feel like what we saw from Bubba Wallace a couple of weeks ago when he got out of that race car and made the big mistake and said, I, I need to get better compared to today. It, that's what a top 10 finish does for you. A absolutely. Only his second top 10 finish of the year. But one thing about it, when Bubba Wallace is kind of searching and kind of off the mark a little bit, all it takes is a trip to a super speedway like Daytona <laughs> yeah. Talladega yeah. yeah. or Martinsville. You know, he has those two truck wins there. Yeah. It seems to always pick them back up again. Yeah, I mean, it's been all the way since Vegas six race ago, races ago when he finished four. And you said it. He's had a lot of a lot of lows uh, over yeah. the course of that. But this has been a great track for him. He's won two truck races here, and it's one of those places every driver has a track that they go to, they feel comfortable, and that you, th you hope you can get the good run. And so it's nice to see him get to have that. What a great day out of Martinsville! But the day is not over here on FS1 because we got USFL coming up. There he is, um, McLeod Bethel Thompson, quarterback for the Maulers, the Pittsburgh Maulers, Maulers. against the New Orleans Breakers. They're in Birmingham. We're going to get to that coming up at the bottom of the hour. And there he is. Oh, burn it down. What about that burnout, Jamie Mack? You think you could have done all, that? All weekend we had good burnout, yeah, Shannon. all weekend. We'll be right back. Next Sunday on Fox, we're looking at high pressures and a 100% chance of chaos as NASCAR will bring the thunder to the biggest track on the circuit. How about this, boys? One wrong move and feel the wrath. Of Dega. Bam, bam, yeah. Oh, oh, look at this great. Big shot. That's going to bust That's up the whole back. It's Talladega Super Speedway. Coverage begins at 2 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Oh, boy, my favorite racetrack on the circuit. I know it's yours, too, Larry Mack. Going oh, home, huh? Home, home track, absolutely. And, you know, she's big, she's bad, and she's bold. We've had a lack of cautions today. I don't think that'll be the case next week at Talladega. You know who interviewed you when you did your uh, I have when no you idea, won? Shannon, tell me. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I know. We talked about it a lot. When he won at Talladega. Yeah, Talladega is a great racetrack. It's fun. I've been able to win there a couple of times. It's, it's one of those places you just don't know that you've won normally until you get to the start-finish line because all those battles are so close. So it's always exciting to watch a race there. The last time we were there is when Gordon Perkle fired up that sirene down there in Dawsonville. Right. Chase Elliott won back in the fall. And we saw Chase Elliott out there today, uh, a little bit worn out after being out of the race car for six weeks with that broken leg. Uh, there's Kyle Larson celebrating victory lane with his crew chief. Let's head up to the booth. Bobby, Clint, and Mike for some final thoughts. Martinsville Speedway always seems to have contradictions, what Larry likes to call comers and goers, and we certainly had that today. The pole sitter Ryan Priest led a third of the race, then had a penalty, was never a contender again. Chase Briscoe leads 100 laps, then he kind of fades, comes back at the end, but early in the race, fellas like Martin Truex, Kyle Larson, Joey Logano were nowhere, and then suddenly they were everywhere. Yeah, covers and goers or, you know, flip the switch, and now we just swap the field around. <laughs> that was really exciting about it. It's like, well, they weren't that fast, but then all of a sudden they were. So, yeah, flipping the switch, I think, was the name of the day today. Well, there's no question. The guys, you know, Larson that won the race, Logano, that sometimes you got to be lucky, right? Well, and uh, that is a, a, a thing in motorsports and sports in general. It landed in their lap today, but you still have to take advantage of it. There was still guys that were nipping on their heels on four tires that could have got a restart and got the job done. Both of those guys did a great job getting out front, getting track position. Logano on no tires, Larson on two, and um, Larson didn't spend much time getting around Logano. And that's the story because how few tracks do we go to anymore where track position trumps tires? Yeah, yeah, strategy for sure today. Uh, you know, and, and you know, you're having track position. We could see it. We saw it all day. The track changed, and the cars moved around quite a bit. But at the same time, track position was the deal. You put tires on it. It's like, well, I'm not as good. So, you know, the two tires, zero tires uh, a couple times definitely uh, paid off for, you know, like Ross Chastain one time, got him back up there. He was nowhere to be found. So, yeah, pretty interesting race for sure. Were you entertained? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. At the end, you know, it all came back around. And, and uh, again, trying to preview this race, even watching practice and qualifying yesterday, today's race was nothing like that. Nope. No, no rain. And no, no rain. rain. I kind of no wanted to see them rain tires. All right. We'll put the umbrellas away and we'll head for Talladega. We love that there was no rain out there and we were able to just watch this race play out. I loved what they mentioned that that, that battle between Joey Logano and Kyle Larson was so fun to watch. <laughs> it may be the first time I've seen Joey Logano <laughs> that happy about a second place finish. But I mean, think about it. He went a lap down. He had to get the free pass there on the first caution and for ha to have that strategy and come back and get a second place finish. He said, I never thought I'd be this happy <laughs> yeah. about that. Yeah, I think you're going to hear the drivers complain about that they want more fall off in the cars that, to try to get more passing as well as places that 
tires just didn't make as big of a difference. But overall, I thought it was a pretty exciting race. It was fun to watch the battle with Logano and Larson. I thought Logano was going to give Kyle a little more of a hard time uh, as he passed for the lead, but he wasn't quite quick enough to get to him, Shannon. We saw Chase Elliott out of the car. It's a little hard to watch because you could tell just oh, how he was, tired he was, he was. A little little pale, right? You could tell that he was really tired after being in that race car all day. Yeah, I feel like when and he left his glasses on, but typically when the guys get out and their eyes are sunk back in their head, you can tell that they're dehydrated. And I'm going to tell you something. I got out of my car a lot of times and wanted to do that, but I never did because I didn't want to show weakness. And so typically when you see somebody do that, it's, it's because they know that they're going to need to sit down or they're going to fall down. Yeah. So kudos to him, though, getting out. Talked about that it was hotter in the car today. Then, uh, then he expected him. Martinsville is a hard race. Yeah, I mean, average running position, 22nd. Crazy. And first time back since Fontana back week number two to get a top 10 finish. I said it on race up Friday. I know everybody's saying they're in a must-win situation. And I think they have to have that mindset. But I'm telling you, 17 races to go, 18 headed into the day. All he has to do is make up 7.5 points per race on 16th. There's that index we finger. finger and going. you know what? I'm not sitting here saying they're absolutely going to have to win. You want, me to, you want me to follow that well, up? I mean, yeah. I mean you know, that's 7. why I looked at you. That's why I My <laughs> Lord. We, we, listen, we, about Chase, we did say that this is going to be a tough track for him to come back to, but there's really no easy track for him to come there, back there's to. There's not. In, in, in Chase's defense today, we tracked Ryan Blaney's heart rate all day. It was 165 to 175. So all the drivers were working really hard. And when you haven't been in a car for a while, it takes a little bit of time to get back acclimated uh, to it. Oh, look. We got uh, Owen and Victor Lamb. How about some confetti? Larkin. We've got uh, Ra Race Hub all week long. Larry will be on tomorrow. Tomorrow, Jamie will be on Wednesday. Eric Almarola will also be on. Don't forget that. And, of course, next week we go to Talladega. USFL coming up next. Thanks for spending your Sunday with us, guys.